baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Casey, is it game time? It's game time. Let's do this. Well, let's do this then, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Welcome to Hoodstocks on a Sunday evening, early evening. Feel good, feel good, baby. Yes, sir. Like, subscribe, all that good shit. Yeah, we got a banger for you. Love, respect, my goonies. I see y'all tapping in. Yes, sir. Let's go. Coca-Cola's up. <laughs> oh, shit. This fool calling me in the wrong time. Come on, bro. <laughs> This fucking guy. <laughs> the fuck, dog? Jesus, man. Yeah. Let's go. Baba! I see it. Righteous monkey. Right there, who we got right there? Man, Daniel Press, Vic, Grandma's Futon. It's all good, baby. Daniel Perez. Who else we got right there? TJ 1400 Black. Lucky how long you been sober for? Sober off of the alcohol. I've been sober for a uh, Damn, over two months, something like that. Whoa. Yeah, I just started uh I just started smoking the beautiful plant of the marijuana. Yes, sir. Love it, I love it, I love it. I need that. Need that medicine, baby. Let's pay some bills real quick. Uh, looking for some good quality cannabis. I mean, Killer! quality cannabis. Hit the folks at Killer Cooks. They specialize in bringing you the best quality available from OG to exotic. They got it all, oh, baby. <laughs> Hit yeah. them up at Killer Kush. Cal at gmail.com or follow them on IG at Killer Kush underscore underscore 420. And matter of fact, I got a fucking location for you right here. Where's if, it at? Hey, where's it at? The good question. If you're local to the OC and LA area, you can find them in the heart of Whittier. And they are are called True Organics. Yes, you can find uh, the the beautiful scents of incense and motherfucking rubbing oils and, and no, I'm just playing. You might be able to find that. I'm not sure if it's true or not. You know what I mean? Uh, jack off uh, lotion and uh, um, you know what, dog? I, whatever happened to my fucking jackhammer, jackhammer hands, fucking jack off lotion that I was gonna make, dog? I was. Hey, right, we'll get back to that. Oh, here's the location. 13739 Leffingwell Road, Whittier, California. They got Unit F, dog, but you don't need to find Unit F. Just look for that motherfucking uh, green cross on the window. Okay, for all you fat fuckers out there trying to lose uh, major weight, or even you IG models, uh, strippers, trying to lose 10 pounds and tighten up that booty, hit up my boy Vince at LA Peptides. They got everything you need to lose weight and feel great. They have Ozempic, Moon. Jaro and even newer and better. They also have tanny peptides as well as horny ties for men and women. Capture that old school sex drive. Yes, sir. Free delivery in LA. O C N I E. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give you his fucking phone number. You ain't gotta email him. You ain't gotta fucking DM him. You can fucking text him right now at seven one four two six nine nineteen hundred. And if you're afraid to give your number and you wanna just fucking do some research first, then DM him at at LA Peptides on Instagram. Big shout out to my G's at Stizzy. Leanne, where you at, girl? Pull up already and stop playing with us. We got some gifts for you, girl. You and a, you and a, a big dog, you know who. Pull up uh, to your local Stizzy shop in your area and cop some of that. Bomb, bomb. You can also follow them on Instagram at Stizzy Nation. <coughs> oh, Jesus. Mm. <laughs> You gotta hawk that loogie. I was eating pussy all night long, you know? <laughs> Shit. My girl ain't shaved in six months, so you know, I'm all congested with fucking... 
Fuzzy hairs. <laughs> Shit. Looking for the best criminal defense attorney in the city of Los Angeles? Look no further. Doug Sherrod is our guy, and he can be your guy as well. Mr. Sherrod used to be a federal prosecutor as well as a district attorney for the city of Los Angeles. He didn't like the unfair politics on that side of the fence, so now he's going to bat for individuals that have been wrongfully accused or just had a bad fucking weekend, right? We don't need that, guys. We're ending the year and the man. You girl, you individuals, you homies, you homegirls, man, be scared leaving this year, all right? Just don't go out. Be cool. Kick it with the family, dog. Play it safe because you do not want to go into next year with a new case. But if you do, if you're a fucking dummy and you just can't help yourself uh, and you need a fucking uh, lawyer, uh, our guy, Doug Sherrod, you can reach him at kingkonglawyer.com. Casey? Kingkonglawyer.com. Ricardo? KingKongLawyer.com. Okay. <laughs> Should we stop calling him Ricardo now? <laughs> Orange County, stand the fuck up and pull your pants down. No, wait, don't do that. <laughs> Gutter Phenom is a lifestyle brand that's dedicated to supporting and inspiring individuals who are determined to achieve their dreams. We believe that no matter where you come through and what you've been through with hard work and dedication, anything is possible. Yes, sir. A portion of our proceeds are donated to the organization to provide vocational training for prolies and scholarship for those in need of drug and alcohol treatment. Jesus. That's what I was going to say. Hey, visit gutterphenom.com. Casey? Gutterphenom.com. Rick? Gutterphenom.com. And use the exclusive code Hoodstocks20 to receive 20% off your order today. All right. Hey, I'm excited about this one, dog. You know why? Because it's a different conversation. And I love having different conversations, just like sometimes you guys should love to hear a different type of story. Even though it's gonna in line with the hood, it's gonna sprout out to the it's gonna sprout out the hood. Um, I think you guys are gonna enjoy this. Hoodstock's guest is out of Santa Maria. Hi way! Uh everyone. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> Everyone might know this man on Instagram uh, uh, as Wild Fit Life 805 Everybody give it up for my G, Justin. Appreciate you. Let's go, baby. Appreciate you. Damn, that's a firm handshake, sir. <laughs> Whoa. Damn. How you doing, Dougie? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, very well, dog. You know, we fucking all just flying in here. Um, and you were very punctual, sir. Appreciate that. That's right. Yeah, I left early. I didn't want to get stuck in traffic. Yeah, I mean, if you were a wild fit rapper, you would be late, bro. But since you're <laughs> fucking wild fit 805 workout guy, motherfucking national forest fucking soldier dog. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be prompt and on time. I mean, uh, yeah. the, you know, it's it's weird the way that works, isn't it? Yeah. You know? Yeah, show up, be accountable. <sighs> show up and be accountable. Damn. Send it in the SOS to K09. Send it in the SOS to K09. I knew that was coming. <laughs> K9, show up and be accountable, sir. <laughs> Yeah, I just I love my boy K9. One day he's gonna get it right because he ain't gonna he ain't ever stop hearing it from me until he gets it right. Because that's my job as his friend, as his homie. That's my little brother. We gotta inspire people just like you do what you do, right? Yeah. You inspire individuals. That's right. Yeah. You know, and it comes back both ways. You know, people interact with the content, keeps me accountable and motivated to keep going. So I love the platform that I created on Instagram and TikTok for that. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. And are is this this is your first live podcast? Yeah. I've I, done a couple little ones, um, just like the via Zoom. Via Zoom. Yeah, but this is the first live one I've done. The via Zooms, are, to me, are kind of whack, bro. I would agree. Because people have said, hey, they said, uh, hey, Lucky, let's do uh, via Zoom. And I'm just like, nah, dog. We, we ain't going to do no. I mean, I will do a via Zoom for someone that's like... Um, Maybe someone that's on the grounds in Palestine or, or Israel, right? That makes sense to do it via Zoom because there's no other way to do that, bitch, right? right? Yeah. Um, but just, you know, like, hey, homie, shit, if it's something else and it's like you got to come, you got to catch a plane. I mean, one day we're going to be able to play, pay for those plane rides. And and one day the crew, myself, K Nizzle, Rick Dizzle, and Casey Fizzle, um, we're gonna be catching planes and we're gonna be doing big things. You Let's know what I mean? Go. We're gonna be doing big things, right. baby. Take it on the road. Take it on the road, though. Yeah. I think a uh, million dollars worth of game does that a lot, dog. Because there's sometimes you gotta you, you gotta go to them, dog. Yeah. You know you gotta go to them, and so shit. You know, it, it, it's hard sometimes to like 
I know we're kind of going off a little subject and shit, but this is what we do right here, baby. Yeah. We shoot the breeze and just chill out, relax, have a good time. You know what I mean? No pressure, dog. Right. But sometimes you got to go and get it. Yeah. You got to go out and get it. And one day our money will be fucking... <sighs> It will be right where we can all go out and get it, you know what I mean? And I'm really, really loving, uh, I'm really looking forward to that time, you know? Yeah. Me too. Can it come like uh, this Sunday or, or today? Because I don't want to go back to work tomorrow. <laughs> you know what, bro? I think, bro, honestly, Casey, I feel so like, I feel so positive of what we're doing right here, dog. I think it's, it's coming really soon. Where we're gonna and we're gonna, it's gonna be great times, dog. Because I want to take, I'll take my lady, I'll take my kids. Uh, I like Rick to take his daughters. I'd like Casey to take his lady. You know, and and, and it, it's a family thing. That's right. Like we're gonna go out and enjoy this shit. Just let him at the hotel, and then we're gonna bounce out, and we're gonna <laughs> yeah, we, we, we're gonna go do our work. You know what I mean? But we should all enjoy this together. You know, and and I'm looking for the when the platform gets to that level where we can do that. And I, I'm, I'll be so excited, not only for the platform, but for the fellas too, yeah. to have this journey together and do that. But you've, uh, so you've done the Zoom. Um, do you feel any nervous doing this live podcast? Um, no, I'm just always a little mindful of what, you know, how you put things out there, but I'm good. Yeah. Well, when you when you recorded your first like uh, home porno, right? Yeah. Did you feel nervous doing that? And knowing that you're gonna watch it back later, maybe more nervous watching it after, huh? <laughs> <laughs> nah, because you feel like you're doing like long strokes, yeah, and then you watch like it back and you realize you're doing bunny rabbit strokes, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. We all feel like we just like fucking. Uh, you know what, bro? This is this is a rated G podcast today, isn't it? Should we keep it rated G? No. No, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right. Well, you know what, dog? Let's not talk about that. This man is, we are all fucking <clears throat> responsible, uh, settled down adults, except Rick. Rick's a wild animal. <laughs> Whoa. Rick's like, you already know. Rick's like, keep it down. Luck, all my side pieces are watching. <laughs> <laughs> and he does not tell me that. I'm fucking 100% bullshitting, guys, or ladies, if you're watching. You know what I mean? Um, uh, what the fuck are we talking about, We're Justin? We're talking about where your uh, your podcast is going to blow up soon. Yes, sir. You know? Yes. And so you are, you've been inspiring people with uh, working out. And you do, not only do you do the podcast, you've done other podcasts on Zoom, but your workouts would be on Zoom as well, right? So I do live workouts with people on Zoom multiple times a week. I do them for my clients all the time. And then I'll do free ones for people just to try to get them going and, and offer them out there like that. And you could join from anywhere in the world. I put it on like in my broadcast channel. Yeah. And then they can just click on We did one yesterday. Oh, and the, and the broadcast channel is a new uh, tool that Instagram has offered. Is that correct? Yeah. So I was telling people to join the broadcast channel and then I'll post the link in there. They, all you gotta do is click on it. Boom. And then you're in my garage with me working out. That's badass. It bro. was good too. It was a good turnout. About 20 people from... Uh, Multiple countries, Mexico, um, the Netherlands, Canada, all over here. Good, good, good shit. That's, that's dope, brother. Congratulations yeah, on that, thank man. You. Congratulations. And that's, man, there's a lot. Man, people are really, I mean, have you done this? How long have you been doing this wild, uh, what is it, Wild Life wild, Fit? Wild Fit Life 805. Wild Fit Life 805. How long have you been doing this for? So I jumped on social media, I think it was November or October of 2020. Okay, so yeah. it's it's nearly nearly still a little bit new. Yeah, it's new. Um, still building the building the uh, the empire. Yeah, so to speak, right? Yeah, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna I'm gonna build it into a corporation. You know what I mean? So I'm just getting started. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, and I feel that too. Um, I'm just barely getting started, right? Yeah. You know. Uh, and so all these videos I see of you, you are in your garage, which is like a gym. Yeah, so with that, I've been building the garage for 16, 17 years, one piece at a time. You know, I got, uh, there's a big piece of equipment I have that one of my homies had buried in his backyard. And he told me to come get it. I gave him 50 bucks for it. I dug it out and put it together, duct taped it, cleaned it up. And now it's got everything you can do on it. And it's got a leg, leg extensions, everything. So I built it like that. I'll go to the Goodwill. Yeah. And I'll pick up things that people want to get rid of, especially after the COVID hit. Yeah. You can check out Facebook Marketplace, all that shit. You can grab it for nothing. 
because people just want to get rid of it. And, and then I, just build it up, support it a lot better. And well, just piece by piece, put the gym together, man. Ah. You know what I mean? Just, just this, that, this, and then I have a gang of shit in there. So you're good with your hands. Yeah. Have you ever given a, a man a massage before? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I won't. Okay, because I was just gonna say, no, and I won't. <laughs> okay, well. Casey, funny. I'm sorry, bro. I tried. Casey, I shot yeah. a shot for you, bro. Yeah, uh, fuck. We go get massages sometimes, and uh, me and my wife, and they, I'm always, the the guys went, no, no, guys, it's it's just awkward for me. You know yeah, I mean? for sure, yeah. especially if you get a boner for some reason, and it's not even him. It's just you thinking about some Instagram <laughs> post. You know what I mean? Dude, but you can't then the dude thinks it's about you, and now he says you're gay, and it's like, nah, dog. I was thinking about some bitch I seen on Instagram, bro. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with you, bro. My hands just happen to be on you. Right. Um, do you ever hire since you working out of the gym? Do you ever hire females to walk by your front of your garage and like spandex just to give you a little inspiration? <laughs> no. No. Okay. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. I get my wife in the gym with me to get me inspiration. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I hear it. I hear it. Yeah. I hear it. Good one. Good one I, for the I, team, I post bro. A, I post appropriate videos of her, but when it's just me and her working out, she'll wear the you know, little stuff. It looks oh, good for me. Okay. I feel it. I feel yeah. a little role play. A little kinky role play. Try so, out the garage. Yeah. So, <laughs> may you guys ever That's on hear the OnlyFans. Ne yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, uh, she jokes about that, too, all the time. <laughs> Doing OnlyFans? Yeah, she's like, we should do that, see how that goes. That would she's be- She's not uh, down though, she, there's no, fuck, I'm not either, I wouldn't put it out there either like that. I'm possessive <laughs> yeah. as fuck, that's mine, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure, and that's all you need is fucking a Lucky, Ricky, and Casey jacking off in the background, bro, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, jackhammer <laughs> 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 I aggressively jack off, dog. If anyone just seen that right there, that's me aggressively jacking off. There um, you go. Yeah, you know, I I jack off like I'm like I'm running a fucking uh, 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 a forty yard dash. You know what I mean? Like ah fucking, <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, so okay, so let's do it like this, bro. We know what you're doing now, and you weren't always doing this, like you said. Let's start the beginning of your journey, brother. I'd like you to share your story here on Hoodstocks today. <clears throat> so I would say a lot of who and how I am today started in my early teens. So before I tell this part of the story, I wanna point out that my mom is a good mom, always had my back and has supported me through anything and everything I've gone through, hands down. Same with my brother and sister, we're close like that. But here, uh, about 12, 13 years old, I started living on my own. Um, the situation was my dad died playing Russian roulette. My sister was grown, lived with her boyfriend. Brother was in prison in Florida. My mom started staying at her boyfriend's in, across town. And just started working out like that. Like, there's a lot of depth to that, but there I was, right? And I grew up in, um, I'm from the projects in Santa Maria. I grew up in the most active area of Santa Maria where I live at. And um, it was just, just me and I started having to figure things out, how to take care of myself. Um, I was taking care of the pad already, inside and out, clothes, just really starting to learn a lot about um, how to take care of myself, you know what I mean? And I did that. But the thing is, is that's what got me really closer to the other homies in the same situation as me. You know, we didn't, I got, the last time I went to regular school was seventh grade, the end of seventh grade, got expelled and arrested for slanging in the bathroom. And then... So the streets and probation and probation schools and camps and all that really became my life, you know what I mean? And I came really close with a lot of people in that time that are still part of my life today. But the point of that part of the story is, is it even at a young age, I started thinking about mindset. I was getting real into psychology. So I was in juvenile hall and uh, they were coming by with the library cart and I happened to grab a Tony Robbins book. Do you know who that is? Yes, sir. Okay, so I grabbed the Tony Robbins book. I was probably like 13 years old. He's a, he's a, uh, a motivational speaker. Yeah, he's, um, well, yeah, he's more, develop yeah, all that. The development, self-development, all that. Yeah. Shallow how. Yeah, he's in that too. Yeah, so Shallow anyway, I got, how. I read that book and it kind of, it just got me, took off into all that mindset and fitness. And I started getting into that at a young age, you know, and um, I was actually always against us using and shit like that. Not in like a judgmental way. I got caught up in, in the party a few times in my life as well. Using drugs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and you were against that because. Because of what it does to who we are. You know what I mean. And, as, and you've seen. So you've seen. And it's it's a 
I'm asking you a dumb question, but I'm, I, I want to hear the reason behind it because maybe, you know, uh, some people were raised with heroin addict parents. You know, some people were in the hood and they seen their their best homies. Yeah, it definitely started overdose and yeah, all that, and it started. It, it it kept with me more. And like I said, I got caught up in it myself a few times, um, and even with drinking in my twenties and and early thirties, but. I've always been real into to taking care of myself and being mindful. Since I was young, I was into working out and that. And so I went to boys camp in um, 98, 99. And that is where a lot of things changed in my life. I started getting into like the, the burpees more, um, lifting, and then the, the whole get down with that. But that's where I got introduced to, to Wildland Fire because that camp was across the street from uh, where the hotshot crew worked. So we would go out on our forestry crew and we would do like a project work with them and stuff like that. So I got introduced to it there. Let me, let me, I want to pause you real quick, bro. I want to pause you. Um, Pops passed away from Russian roulette. Yeah. Okay. Can you, can you speak a little more in depth about that? Really? um, That has a lot to do with, well, no, on him, I can't. So I hadn't seen him since I was six years old. So was this information that was passed down to you? No, I knew about it right when it happened. Yeah, they called us and told us what was going on. Was it Russian roulette or was it a suicide? It was a combination of both. It was Russian roulette. But what we found out later is that he was in a state of mind where he didn't really give a fuck anyway about things. So he was just spinning that motherfucker. Well, him and his friends, I guess, always played that. It was actually in um, the early 90s, and it was kind of a popular game at that time. My brother's brother's best friend died playing it, too, kind of around the same time. Yeah. It's, wow. But I didn't know. I hadn't seen him since I was six. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's actually a really impactful part of my life and who I am as a dad. And it and it, so a positive thing in my life, really. You know what I mean? And then it also helps me really, you know, I, I really am big on mindset and how mental health and physical health go hand in hand. And so where was, okay, so Pops basically wasn't in the picture. No. Okay, and so mom's was your rock. She took care of you. Yep. The best that she could. Yep. But you guys were in uh, the Santa Maria Projects. Yeah, I actually lived right around the corner. Okay. Which is actually a thing, too, because that's right when in the early 90s they put the gang injunction on us, so we couldn't be in the projects. So you're from a hood? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What hood is that, bro? It's Evans Park. Evans Park. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so I grew up right around the corner from it. So my house became the spot, especially once I was on my own. So I actually got intermixed with all the different groups and everything. So I was all in, you know what I mean? And so how was it growing up in that area? Because, you know, we're in L.A. right here, bro. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of interested on, you know, what the what the terrain was like back in, in those days. I'm sure it wasn't much different than it was here. You know, it's pretty yeah. active, right? Yeah. A lot of shit going on. I mean, how was it growing up in in that area? Pretty much the same as, as you're describing what it is here, you know what I mean? It It is that. And and still now to this day, you know, people are getting at it. It's, that part of town is packed with people. So, and people trying to survive. So it's as active as you can imagine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How, how far is it from Santa Maria from here? How, two, two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. Yeah. Okay. Is it past... Um, it's Santa Barbara County. Santa Barbara County, which is past... Uh, like Ventura, all that area. Yeah, but it's past Ventura on the coast. Which is nice. So they got wine country out there too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's surrounded by nice. Uh, Santa Barbara's pretty nice. But Santa Barbara has both sides of it too, you know what I mean? And then it's got San Luis, which isn't very far. So there's a bunch of uh, the wineries, good hikes out there, all kinds of shit like that. Is Pismo Beach out that way? Yeah, about... I live about 20, 20 minutes from Pismo. Okay. Yeah. I've been to Pismo Beach years ago one time. We had to, uh, we went camping there, and um, I had a tent, and everybody had uh, trailers, bro. Yeah, it's a sick spot. I was, I was pretty bitter, bro. No, because you had a tent? I had a tent, and it was windy <laughs> as fuck. It does huh? get bad. I took, yeah, I took my wife and kids there, and it happened to be a windy-ass day, and she hasn't gone back since for camping. It's fucking miserable, dog. My fucking tent was fucking sideways the whole time, bro. <laughs> it's on your face. And I come out, and motherfuckers are just stepping out of their trailer, homie, and I'm just like, man, fuck these motherfuckers, dog. Yeah. Now you should get a trailer and go back? Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah. Um, okay. No, I'm just trying to. I'm trying to uh, get my get my head wrapped around exactly the area that uh, you're at. Okay. Yeah, so, the area I grew up in, it's it's packed with people. And put it this way, I'm the only person. Well, me and like two other people that I'm Irish. Okay. And so, and I grew up in a Mexican neighborhood, which is meaningful to me that I'm a part of that. And so, who and who and how I am to this day, I honor that the culture and everything that it is because it's something to me to be a part of that and i was raised around that culture in that culture um the love that i got from from my neighbors you know what i mean there's two specific families that really were involved in and how i am you know what i mean the maldonados and the vigils so sonia used to send the the kids over with plates of food for me and stuff you know just showing me love like that because she knew i'd be over there just eating microwavable food or something like that and then I actually, the older homies at the time got tired of seeing me, seeing me eat the microwavable food and told me, hey, get some food, have your mom buy some of this and that, because my mom was always buying the groceries and stuff. Yeah. And uh, they taught me how to cook, you know, and started doing like the steaks and rice and just different shit like that. Just so, so were you kind of like the fucking dirty ass white boy homie? <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> I was more like. <laughs> always eating TV dinners. <laughs> I was more like the the Zach Morris of the neighborhood. You remember when I was a little kid? You who's, you, Zach, who's Zach Morris? You don't remember that? Saved by the Bell? Oh, oh Saved by the Cute that. as fuck, you know what I mean? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Zach Morris, I remember that dude, uh, dog. Saved by the Bell, man. Shit, that was a classic-ass TV show that we all watched, bro. Yeah. I, that was with Urkel in it, too, right? No, it's, no. Uh, no, that was Urkel. It was same Urkel. time show. Same no. time oh, show. Oh no, no! Zach Morris had fucking the Mexican dude in it. What's his name? Oh yeah, um, you're right. Um, uh, Mario Lopez. Oh, yeah, Mario Lopez, Lopez. Mario Lopez yeah, was in that. There yeah. you go. Yeah, but those two shows were going on at the same time. Yeah, man, bro. I'm not uh, Zach Morris, bro. Really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I always See, fuck around like that because I used to have uh, before I started shaving my head, I had that little haircut. You know what I mean? Was it before you started going bald, or can you can you grow your hair out? I grow full head hair. Oh shit! So you choose to be bald? Yeah, I've been shaving my head bald. I started, you know, in the early '90s, I started with the fade. Yeah, which was popular, but then I shaved it. Yeah, I got fucking hooked. It feels clean, smooth. Excuse me. Yeah. 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 You should draw. You should grow the hair out and just kind of catch that little Zach Morris uh, vibe from back yeah. in the day. Sometimes when I go to fires, I let it grow out for the two weeks. I look like a. I don't like. It. I look like a fucking chia pet. You know what I mean? Yeah, All for right. sure, bro. So, no. I, I feel it too. I can grow my hair out too, but I choose to just keep it. You know, just keep a little buzz cut, baby. You know what I mean? Keep it clean. Yeah, it's easier to deal with, you know. And I tell my girls sometimes too because they'll see pictures of times that I've grown my hair out, and they're like, "Daddy, you look funny with hair because they're just <laughs> so used to seeing me like this." And I and sometimes. Sometimes they'll say, Daddy, why don't you grow your hair out? Like, you know, they're back and forth sometimes with their thoughts and their feelings because they're so young, right? Yeah. And I said, I can grow it out, love you. I'm going to grow my hair out. I'll grow my hair out. And they'll be like, nah, then you're going to look funny. Leave yeah. it like that. We like it like that. You <laughs> yeah, know, so. No, I, I, don't like the, I don't like the hair anyway. Yeah. yeah even my kids, they, they're, uh, you know, they have their hair and their little styles. I'm not into it. Yeah. I no. mean, they could be who they want to be, but. I Absolutely, yeah, bro. I don't like it. Absolutely. I, uh, I keep trying to convince my son to, to cut his hair again. Because I used to shave his head all the time until he got in, like, junior high. Yeah. And then he wanted to, uh, to have the hair, so I'm going to do everything. I just, I just buzzed my hair. There's, like, a half right here. Oh, shit. Uh, there you go. Look at this little gangster all right fresh. here, dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then, he, <laughs> see in there. then he puts the condom back on his head. Mm. <laughs> What about that fucking, that, that white cap was funny as fuck, bro. This fool has, he makes these hats, bro. Matter of fact, plug your shit real quick. You got a website up now, don't you? Hey, everybody. So if you like my hats uh, and you fuck with me, check out my website. It's called brerolosangeles.com. B-R-E-R-O, losangeles.com. I just dropped a, a little collection. Check it out. Whoa. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, the, the right. website is amazing. But he sews those hats, bro. Oh, you make them? Yeah, he, he makes, makes them, bro. Oh, that's awesome. legit. Yeah, bro. This dude is... Oh. The boy is talented, dog. Yeah. He's, he's kind of like... He's on 100% an old soul, bro. I'm just waiting for him to start up his fucking cigar business. He starts rolling cigars and shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You're going to open a little spot in Vegas. <laughs> that'd be sick. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be super sick, dog. Um, so, okay, so, and I, and I apologize, bro, because I felt like you just went a little too quick in the beginning. I like to have a better understanding. Oh, yeah. And so, so does our audience, right. bro. You know, our audience wants to know who Justin is. And, you know, I like to just slow it down a little bit oh, yeah. when I feel like the guest is going too quick. Um, your mom, tell us a little bit about your mom, bro. You know, um, she's still here to this day? Yeah, she's still 
probably my biggest supporter in everything that I do. You know what I mean? That's awesome. Yeah, we're, we're close. And we've always been close. You know, just there was that time in my life. Well, I happened to be at the age I was when that shit happened. But it wasn't. Uh, so I was just there. You know what I mean? And then she, she. Well, basically, my mom went from working at grocery outlet. Um, struggling. You know what I mean? To she. And then she met her now husband. And she just got busy with life. Um, he was in this thing called the Rotary Club. So now she's fucking going to Japan for meetings and doing these type of things, you know? So just life kind of happened, you know? And wait, wait, hold on. She's going to Japan for meetings? Just so an what example. She like, she wasn't in the meeting, but her husband. And the Rotary Club's like this big organization where they do a lot of donations and stuff like that. It's just a community. Is but they travel around and do stuff like that. Is it like fucking a sweater vest type of club, bro? I would say close to that. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Damn, bro. No, it's I, I, no, that's cool, bro. Yeah, it's kind of like a, hey, I like an mad. adult boys and girls. I don't know. I ain't mad at it, bro. Yeah, I don't know. Bunch of she, Republicans? Yeah. Pr yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. And right? she, uh, she I, I, that was what her husband was doing at the time. So, you know, that was her, her life. And she went to, now she owns her own company. She, my mom's real into animals. And that's her thing. So now she has her own business where she takes care of animals, and and that's her life, man. She's got a little acre where she has, uh, you know, kennels and all her stuff. Oh damn, bro! Yeah. Shout out to mom, bro. Yeah, she's fucking. She, she hustles hard, homie. But she's she uh, hustled up a good dude. It sounded like cause she. Yeah, did. it was it was a good timing <laughs> for her. Yeah, yeah you know? and that's amazing because she obviously do got a good woman, right? You know, what I mean, I'm not trying to talk shit or anything like that. Even no, though, of course. Yeah, um, that's moms we're talking about, right? And that's dope. So she's living her best life, but it wasn't always her best life. Right, Especially yeah. when you guys are around the corner from the projects, right? Well, yeah, so she was working at Grocery Outlet. You know, always chasing, you know, the regular life. Check to check. Ooh, that's this tough, and that. Man. So just a lot of things happened at that time. Like I said, it wasn't like, it wasn't that she was leaving me alone intentionally is why I said she's a good mom. You know what I mean? It's just, that's just the way shit worked out at that time. And I was there. So there I was in the neighborhood. And that became the everything in my life. You know what I mean? Just invested in, in, in what my neighborhood is. We were, didn't go to school. We were in the juvenile halls, camps, probation schools, stuff like that, normal. And that just became what my life was, you know. And my sister was, uh, I think, 18 around that time. When I was, so she lived with her boyfriend in an apartment. And then my brother, he was in prison in Florida. So you don't say it, though, because I want to make a little bit of a game out of this. Bro. All right. Okay. You had a hood name, though, right? I do. Okay. So... Hey, whoever gets the hood name they won't get it. right, oh. <laughs> whoever gets the hood name right on the chat wins a fucking Hoodstocks t-shirt, dog. Damn. Wins a Hoodstocks t-shirt. Hey, do you want to text it to me, Lucky, so I know? So I could look? Yeah. Uh, well, you uh, want to you text it to me. All right. And then I'll text it to him since you don't have his text. <laughs> Damn, dog, we're fucking passing the text put down right here. The time. <laughs> Let me see. Um, this not, though, was the radio in jail. Stash. They said, you got the, they said you got the Mario Brothers stash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Then nobody's going to get this one, bro. <laughs> yeah, so somebody got it already. Oh, they got it? Yeah, well, it's oh, good if I know, they know me, you, you know bro. They know yeah. you, yeah. Yeah, they know it. Okay, so it's Shiner. Yeah. It's Shiner. Why did they call you Shiner from your hood? So, actually, as a specific story, um, it kind of it kept... Well, anyway, so look at me and a couple of my boys. We were out in the middle of the night trying to do something. And my homie started teasing me that I was gonna get us caught because the fucking street light was shining off my head because I'm white. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. My homie Papa's giving me that name. Oh funny. my God, that is hilarious, bro. That's <laughs> a good one, though. That's yeah. a good one. It was good. And then it kind of yeah. stuck, you know what I mean? So. Homie love right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, dog, you're gonna get us busted, bro. The light. <laughs> yeah. That's, you know what? That's one thing I will always love. About the homies, we're the most, we're, we're the most low key. Like we know, only the homies know how funny the homies is, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean, because a lot of us, you know, we're not fucking stand up comedians where we can show the whole world, you know, our humor. Yeah. You know, but I don't give a fuck, dog. Some of my famous, some of my favorite comedians, bro, are black, bro. But the motherfuckers that have made me laugh the hardest. We've all been homies, bro. Yeah. Doing some funny ass shit, bro. Calling you out on your real some shit. Some real life fucking shit, dog. Yeah. But you couldn't even make up, dog. You couldn't even make up, dog. Yeah. It was so horrible, it was hilarious, bro. Some of the shit, you know? Yeah. I've laughed those gut laughs. <laughs> Only the homies. Yeah. And some comedians too. But to get that gut laugh, bro, 
where it hurts to laugh. Mm-hmm. Homies are the fucking funny motherfuckers, dog. That's right. You know, and, that, and that's one thing that I try to do right here is I try to, like, I don't give a fuck, you white homie, Asian homie, you a Jew homie, you a Palestinian homie, you know what I mean? Whatever the fuck homie you are, bro, we still we still fall in line with the, with the same characteristics and personality, bro, and yeah. sense of humor as well. Yeah. You know some homies, you know, a little more rigid, you know what I mean? They don't like to play too much, yeah. you know? But they'll laugh if it ain't on them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> they'll laugh yeah. if it ain't on them, but once it's on them, some of them might take it a little serious, you know? That's right. But, it's a good game. Yeah, yeah. The good game. <laughs> the good fuck, game. I got a story homie. about that shit. Yeah, about the good game. Yeah, tell it, bro. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so right now, I don't even know how much I can really say about it because I'm actually fighting some of it right now. But I, so, so they tried to get us in trouble on my crew for for doing that. You know, like the whole good game shit, yeah, like at the yeah. top of a hike or something. Yeah. Fuck. They tried to turn it into something else and. Uh, like sexual harassment? Yeah, they, we had to beat it. We had to be like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? You know what oh, I mean? so they, they, they brought up charges well, on, on your, like, Not on me specifically. They tried to make it be a honest, thing. Be honest, bro. No, it's okay, bro. <laughs> no, the homie got fired for a whole mess of shit. <laughs> yeah. but, go. but it, uh, so not on me specifically, but just the situation. Like, fuck. They ain't so, even knowing that's no, what they we They tried to turn something else yeah. into something that it wasn't. You that's know some what I mean? clowning yeah. shit that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Good game. Well, you know, it depends, dog. Maybe the food that was given the good game was slipping a finger at the same time. <laughs> 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 Maybe Sean, right? Sean, yeah, right? Might, have, might have been doing something extra. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different. That's a violation of a good game right there. Like I ain't never got a good game like that. But yeah. I know, I know if somebody give me a good lame game like that, homie, I'm pressing charges it's all too, bad, dog. Hell dog. yeah, dog. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's, it's funny, uh, the good game. But it's like, if you're fighting fires and we're going to get into that, bro, it's kind of like locker room. You know what I mean? It's locker exactly. room shit, bro. It is. And just like, just like you're going to bring some of your family here and now you understand that it's not... You, you feel what I'm saying? No, this yeah. is a locker room right here, bro. Yeah, no, I get it. This is a locker room. Although my daughter would... She she knows how to fuck around already. It's funny. She would have been cool. Fuck yeah, she talked shit. But I would have felt like no. But it, it's not. It's, yeah. yeah, I would have felt a, a, a very uh, have to watch what you say. Or, yeah, exactly. Yeah, nah, fuck. No, I got it. Exactly. Yeah. Just out of respect, even though you guys might have that. But exactly, you, know, you feel me, dog? Yeah, I got to be easy on that. Um, and we were a professional environment, bro. You know, there as you much as we can, and and especially in terms of that of like. You yeah, know, someone bringing their kids or something. You know, right. are they over eighteen? You yeah. know, are they ready for this? You know? yeah. Anyways, um, so you went to juvenile halls. You went to camp where you started doing burpees. Why did you go to the halls for? But I just went to the halls for all the normal shit that we all go. Th- I mean, if you if growing up in it, you know what I mean. It was always just, you know, the smoking or well, slanging, fighting, just the normal normal shit. You know what I mean? Um, I did get. Uh, strong armed when I was like 16 and I think that's what ended up sending me to camp you know yeah but um it was all just normal shit everyday shit anyway but the thing with the system and I didn't go to prison I never went to prison that's kind of a, a part of the story that uh that I'm proud of because I changed the whole path of what I had going on and beat the system I feel like in my the probation anyway you know but um so the juvenile hall the way the system gets you locked in like that is bullshit. You know, they used to, like I said, they put the injunction on us. Yeah. So they used to lock me up for fucking playing basketball in the projects. I got locked up before for playing handball. Cause I mean, in fact, I wasn't supposed to be there and I knew that. So it is what it is, but that's where I played. I was a fucking well, so kid. The injunction, inju- I, we were in the injunction too right here and it's illegal, bro. The injunction is illegal, though. Oh, for them to do that. For them to do it, yeah. yeah. what they did, and they, you know what I mean? That's, that's what it was, though. Well, the city of Los Angeles, uh, uh, they're paying a lot of the guys back wow. for that, because there was a big uh, something case. I, I have it at home, the paperwork on it, but anyways, uh, like, they sent me to UCLA. UCLA. <laughs> that's a swap meet, UCLA. <laughs> Um, I, I went to UCLA uh, for free. Uh, they bought me my first uh, laptop that I started the podcast with because I told them I wanted to start a podcast, and it was like a three thousand dollar podcast. I mean, three thousand dollar laptop at wow. Mac. At, um, R.I.P. Yeah, yeah. fuck. I, I, I fucking what I do to that shit. Remember, now? we're on the phone, and then you're like, "Fuck!" I just dropped dropped coffee, coffee on, on a three thousand uh, dollar laptop, and it fucking fried it, bro. Man, and then I try to get it fixed, and they wanted to charge me as much as the laptop. Yeah, you gotta pay. <laughs> you gotta pay for that extended warranty. You know what I mean? Yeah, I thought I did. No, that yeah, the Apple Care, hundred um, percent. 
Why did I get on this topic right uh, here? You're talking gang injunction. injunction. Oh, gang injunction. So, yeah, it's illegal. But, and it's crazy because a lot of the, only Los Angeles got the love on it. It was the Rodriguez something, something Rodriguez. Somebody fought it, right? Huh? Yeah, they fought it in Los okay. Angeles, but there's a lot of homies in Orange County. That fought it. That, it was a, no, that but, Santa Ana has fought it. But they, yeah. they didn't get no love from it because they the homies from OC be asking me about that. Oh, well, when I first seen this stuff, when it first came out, that um, we were like, able to fight the gang injunction i think it was the homies from santa ana that actually uh that went to court and actually fought all that oh, shit. Wow. that's good from from my understanding i may be wrong but when i was in jail like looking up like different stuff on that um next lexus stuff they show you a bunch of stuff to where like uh the homies from santa ana were the ones like really on that shit, like fighting that shit. that's right yeah. Good shit. Good shit. Real yeah. talk. Yeah. Um, so you are entitled to a hefty lump sum, sir. <laughs> Real talk. You might be able to get some money. Real talk. You might uh, be able would, to. Yeah, but we were kids. This is back in the 90s. They when ain't I was tripping on, on that. You just oh, put yeah? your name up in there. Oh, I shit. think there's a deadline, but wow. uh, pretty sure you could put your name. You could file and, and everything will come out. Like if they ever made you sign the gang injunction paper, yeah. they give you they give you money, big dog. Sure yeah, out. real Yeah, time. that actually played a real big factor in uh, a huge part of my of my teenage years, you know what I mean? Because like I said, that we couldn't be inside that square, right? So ev so my house, having my own spot, became the spot, which brought a lot of everything and anything that was going on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so uh, there's that, and then all the in and out, and then, you know, they put you in probation school, or they lock you up for fucking shaving your head, you know, all the dumbass rules, you know. The, That's crazy. So they keep you in the system, you know, it's just, it's nasty, you know, so it just became like, a, at that time in my life, though, I didn't care whether I was at home or in there, just because all my same, I mean, the people who I consider my family from my neighbor, we were, they were there too, so we were just either there or there, you know what I mean? It just didn't really matter, it was normal, and then... Um, the camp thing was, it was actually like camp because the person, uh, anyway, I ended up not getting the time that they wanted to give me because somebody didn't come and testify. So I only got six months instead of them, what they wanted to originally give me. So me being in camp, I was happy to be there and I loved it. That was my first time being in that kind of environment. It was outside. You know what I mean? We're working out in big old groups. Um, so that's where really, I, I got into the whole fire thing. You know what I mean? I liked it. And uh, when I got out of camp, is when my first kid, my oldest daughter, was going to become, I was 17, I was going to be having my first daughter. So at that time, a lot of things shifted for me. I started really trying to um, have jobs and, 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 and do things, you know, and, and, and it was important to me to be a dad, falling back on the whole thing when we were talking about my dad, you know. So that was a, a big thing in my life. And I've actually had custody of them since they were two and three, and now they're in their 20s. Wow! Congratulations yeah, on that. Yeah, thanks. It's a, it's a it's a trip having kids that are so close to your age. You know, like if yeah. you had a, if that you had your true. you said you had your daughter at seventeen. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a, and you have a good relationship with her to this day? Yeah. Yeah, because you we said just you, went you, to Vegas. Yeah. You raised them, huh? Yeah. You raised them. That's well. Congrats on that, brother. Yeah, thank um, you. And so, you you talked about a pinnacle point of of change. You know, was. Uh, was it your kids having starting to have your kids and being responsible, getting out of that time of camp? I mean, when when did you when did you pivot in your life? So I would say the change for me is in not being reckless and con considering them in all my actions. Okay. And that started, you know, and I messed up again when they were really young. So that's when I ended up doing the whole little county thing for a little bit, just dumb shit. But then when I got out when I was twenty three. That's when I took custody of them, and then I never went back again. Okay. And I just did the county thing for like two years. It was just dumb drug shit, slanging this and that. So it was like uh, kind of broken up. I think I did. I don't remember the breakdown, but it ended up being around two years. It was uh, I was in there for a while. Got out for three days. Got a DUI. Another so long. Got out for five days. Got another DUI. Went back in, and then then I was done. And uh, they gave me probation and all that. And Fuck, I, that was the first, I was on probation until I was 28 and I got into fire when I was 25. So to not, to be able to be out on probation was a challenge, you know what I mean? But I was committed to, uh, you know, taking care of my kids. Cause that's like I said, I took custody of them. And uh, to be honest with you, having a job like that and being gone, you actually miss out on a lot of shit where people are fucking up because you're at work. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
Absolutely. Yeah, not even intentionally trying to stay out of the way, but you stay out of the way because you're at work. You got a program. Yeah. Yeah. So that actually, you know, played a big factor in, in, in my life. You know? Well, shoot, bro. I can easily say this, and I'm sure a lot of fellas can uh, concur on this, uh, this statement that I'm going to make right now. I mean, if you are working, if you're out on pro or probation, or if you've lived that pa past type of life, and, you know, uh, a job will keep you out of a lot of shit, huh? Yeah. What do you well, think, Rick? I, I can concur on that for sure. You know, I'm out on uh, federal probation right now, and um, just having a job and just being able to go somewhere and be out of the way for eight hours out of the day, um, that that's a big, big deal in your life. Like, it's it's a lot... It's a lot to do, you know what I mean? You you come home tired, so you still need to shower, you know, yeah. relax for a little bit. So all that stuff is good, man. I, and that's a that's a good um um start in in um getting away from the old life, you know? Yeah. At least for busy. me. Yeah, for busy. sure it is. Get getting yeah. away a start from getting away from the old life. For sure. You know, because you start rubbing shoulders with regular dudes. Yeah. You start getting a fucking, you know, especially in Rick's uh, case, getting a fucking nice paycheck, bro. You know, once a week. Need that. Whoa. Yeah. Man. And, and that, just, that just alone right there yeah. changes the game. Huh? That, that union money, dog. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. money. Prevailing wages. Yeah, get all that. That's right. Yeah, they, they looked out tough. I got out. The homie hooked me up with a good job out the way able to make good money so that's right yeah real talk like you know making good money you know my PO I'm probably making more money than my PO <laughs> <laughs> you know, fuck yeah that's what's up all lying. legal baby Spend legal time. money <laughs> yeah. like real shit so I think sometimes that's why they get mad they're like oh this fool look at him you know yeah Making that good money, dog. You know, well, journeyman, yeah. journeyman three, Fuck money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Motherfuckers that know, they know. Making that good money, dog. For real, no <laughs> lie. And I'm happy he's making that good money, bro. Right. And 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 to and especially from where this dude came from, you know what I mean? He needed that, that he needed that alley oop. Like he needed oh, that alley oop just because of the money that he used to have from the other side of the game. He needed that alley oop to really lock him in to stay on the right side of the fence. And I love what the homie did for the homie right here. And that's that shit's right. it's dope. But like you said, bro, you know, not intentionally, you end up staying out the way that's it. by having a fucking job, a program, bro. Yeah. You know? And sometimes you may wanna, you may be passing through and seeing the homies kick it, but you're tired as fuck, dog. Yeah. Cause you just worked a fucking eight, 10, 12 hour day. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, you need to go home. You're hungry, you dirty, you wanna take a shower. I mean, whatever the fuck you're doing. But so what before the so holding a job you said what what jobs did you hold down before you got into uh, uh fighting uh fires, bro? So I was a carpenter, ended up as a finished carpenter, and then worked at restaurants like cooking and shit. Oh, you can cook? I can cook, yeah. You said, I can cook. I can cook How man. can you cook, bro, when you were raised on fucking Hot Pockets and shit That's like that, That's why I can cook, because that all started shifting at about 14, 13 years old. Because you said the neighbors started putting yeah, you up on yeah, game. Yeah, my homies started teaching me. Okay. Yeah, I actually did like a little um, little thing with them the other day talking about it, you know. It, what, what, what do you cook, brother? What's, what's your? Well, I can cook all kinds. Of, I love barbecue, and I barbecue all the time. I, now, I, well, okay. I prep my food that way, so I'll prep um, my chicken. My we do a little bit of red meat, so try to. My wife makes the steak inside because that shit's bomb the way she grills it up. But the normal shit, you know what I mean? Tri tip chicken, barbecue that up. So we have meats for the week because for dinner we only do uh, protein and a salad normally. Through throughout the week. Yeah. So you're on a keto diet? No, I'm not on a keto diet. We eat clean though. You eat clean. Yeah, and we so we, we dressing. What kind of dressing do you use in the salad? Salsa. Salsa. Yeah. Salt like mm. chili. Yeah. <clears throat> salsa. She's bomb. Yeah. Pico. Huh. Game Pico. Pico you no, know, actual salsa. Homemade salsa. Oh, okay, okay. Actual homemade salsa. What about the uh, oil and vinegar? You like that one? The Newman's oil and vinegar. It's all right. I mean, I don't know about the brand, but, I, but it's all it's all like a whole and organic, and it's yeah. It's but most of we mess with the salsa. Mm. We do, we do this like a, it's like a cleanse where you don't have. Uh, any additives, preservatives, nothing like that. And so the sauces, homemade sauces, where you get that, my wife makes it. What about cream of Sung Young Little Homie? 
<laughs> That's right. But yeah, I can cook, man. I love cooking. You know, I got certain things that I make inside. You'd be surprised I can make some bomb ass tacos. Well, let me ask you this question, bro. So I I just got, man, I just got my fucking, I, man, I'm so happy about this, bro. I got the 22 inch Weber grill, bro. Okay. And I haven't been wanting to spend the money on it. Um, and, and I know it's just a barbecue. It's a, it's a charcoal barbecue, bro. It's the 22 inch round yeah. one, bro. Use mesquite. Okay, use mesquite. All right, and and it's so dope, bro, because the 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 uh, grill on it actually has lids Man. that come off the sides, so you can just stuff a little more charcoal in there, or just <laughs> do different things, bro. It's right. it's a really dude. Weber grills are the best grills, and that's why they're so fucking expensive, bro. Yeah. So it's my first Weber this time getting out, and um, it's like a two hundred and some dollar barbecue. I got it on uh, offer up for a hundred dollars, bro, and the fucker was like used once or twice, bro, mm, from an Asian dude in Rosemead. Oh, yeah. Shout out to that motherfucker, dog. Um, Ooh, so where I'm yeah. from is actually known for barbecue. I mean, okay, you've never heard of Santa Maria barbecue? Yeah, yeah. So I, that's we have the big ass barbecues with the, oh, the deep shit. oak wood. Them motherfuckers are expensive, bro. Now you can get well. A lot of people make them around. Yeah, there, you know what I mean. But the so, ones that make them, they ain't the shit, dog. They ain't giving like, them bitches away. Like that's two, for sure. two, three hundred bucks, you can get a decent one. A Santa Maria barbecue? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's some okay. my fucking Albertsons and Costco like that. Huh? Yeah, yeah, and it's I, worth it. Yeah, if you like the barbecue. So check it out. So, oh, I barbecued a uh, turkey, bro. Mm, oh, for Thanksgiving. For Thanksgiving. That's right. How was that? Bomb, bro. But I fucked up and I cut it the wrong way. Uh, you know, cause the spat, spat, spatch, spatulate, okay. whatever you call it, where you open it up, you're yeah. supposed to cut the uh, the spine out. I cut the I I, I gave it a C section, bro. Oh shit! Uh, I cut it the wrong way, <laughs> and I knew something was fucked up, dog, because that bitch was laying and it had like a neck sticking out, dog. <laughs> <laughs> It just looked wrong. It looked yeah. like the shit had a little fucking chubby and shit. Yep. Um, but it came out really good. It took five hours. But this is the question I want to ask you. All right. um, so I made I made chicken yesterday. And, mm. you know, chicken, you can do chicken different ways. You know, the what? best chicken that I've ever done it is I actually smoked the chicken and it was so delicious. But if you want to do a barbecued chicken and, and you just want to, you know, you want it to be perfect, bro. Um, what is the, what is the best way of cooking? Is there a time limit for the fucking chicken? And I'm talking about just uh, 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 thighs or something, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just don't worry about undercooking them. You know what I mean? You still want them soft and juicy. I mean, do you cook it with a lid at certain time? I mean, do you no. have a? No? I don't use a Weber though. We keep it open and just on the flame that it. You know, you can see. Basically, just don't let it get too hard and dry. You know what I mean? Just flip it and, and don't worry about overcooking it. Because a lot of people get fearful of chicken. You know, they're going to get salmonella or whatever. Yeah. I like mine just borderline right there. So it's borderline dangerous. Huh? Borderline dangerous. You know what I mean? <laughs> but that's how that shit's Whoa. good, though. Well, it kind of sounds like you really don't know what you're talking about with the barbecue, bro. I don't have a timer and shit. But yeah, I know. How no, to, I'm just fucking. I, mean, I know, but I'm saying, I don't have a timer for the meat or anything. But they okay, have a trick. So with what the do you know how to cook? What is your recipe? What is something that you will pride yourself on and you will enter it into a contest? My tri tip. Your tri tip. Ooh, yeah. okay, okay. Okay. So the sounds way good. the way I barbecue my tri tip, I can you can do it the, in in the whole way with the foil at the end to let it keep cooking itself. But what I do is I season it up and I marinate it with uh, lemon, soy sauce, a Budweiser, and uh, Santa Maria style seasoning, right? So then I cook it up, I just I just uh, sear it on both sides, and then I cut it while it's still, while it's still raw, and then I drop each piece in the, in the, um, the marinade mm -hmm. and put it on the grill, and then when I'm gonna flip it again, I do it again. So each piece gets its grill markings. And each piece gets seasoned again. So okay, so that 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 sounds like something you know what the fuck you're doing on then, bro. It you is know? good, yeah. It sounds good, bro. Yeah, it sounds really good. <laughs> well, when somebody has a plan of attack like that, you know, I mean, they can really break it down and tell you, hey, well, each little thing, bop, 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 whoa, whoa. The chicken the, one was hard. Well, I mean, the chicken, the chicken one was hard. Just fucking cook it and flip it. I don't chicken's know. Chicken's usually <laughs> at least forty minutes. Usually at least forty minutes. Bro, there's somebody in the in the chat right now saying, nah, dog. I'm gonna tell you how to cook chicken, Luck, and there's a fucking... There's a good recipe right there and a good way to do it, probably. Well, yeah, well, because you don't wanna... You don't, well, you check it out, bro. You can go pass by a tire shop right now and there's gonna be a bison in that parking lot, dog, and he's gonna have the flame going on one of those half barrel fucking grills, bro. No <laughs> top on it, and it's gonna be delicious, yeah. bro. Shout out to that dude, because I bought that before. <laughs> but I don't know, I just, there's an art, bro, to yeah, the barbecue, is. bro. So I got, I said this before and I'm sorry guys, but I love barbecuing and it's just fun. Like if you're a dude, bro, you like to barbecue, man. I, I do it every fucking weekend if I can. Yeah. Um, 
But I got stuck watching the Netflix thing about the barbecue kings or I whatever. Watch that shit too. Shit was so good, dog. And I picked up a lot of game. Yeah. And I realized that the little hom- the homies in the back doing the backyard bo- boogie, burning the asada, serving it up. We were like, this shit is delicious, dog. But if you take a little bit of time, mm-hmm. you can really make pieces of meat taste like out of this world, bro. Yeah, you can. Like you've never had it before. You, you know, so there's a real, there's a true art to that show. I like that, that show. show too. Yeah. That was a good one. Oh, I got inspired, bro. Yeah, you get little, little little ideas, even for the fucking sides that they put out. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, that's some grown man shit right there. Yeah. You know I mean, and especially when you're settled down, oh, yeah. you got a lady, you got kids. That's like, your spot. Back yeah, yeah, yeah you get inspired of, of doing stuff like that because, you know, you got idle time sometimes. Yeah. You know, opposed to like, you know, if you're, you know, if you're on the fucking running and gunning, baby, on that single shit, yeah, you ain't wasting no time yeah. on no fucking barbecue shit. No, you're pulling up to the barbecue, getting the plate, snatching up one of the homies' fucking sisters, bro, and boning out, bro. <laughs> you know? No, maybe That's not. Right. Um, so, okay, so you want to get into ads, lucky? Yeah, let's do ads, and we'll, and we'll get into that. We'll get we'll get into your story. Yeah. All right. Um, All right. Further into your story. I'm sorry, Don. Here we go. Here we go. Let me get into this. Let me get into this. <clears throat> All right, everybody. So big shout out to Apish OG. You can cop all their amazing flavors of Apish OG at OG Nation in the city of Maywood. All right. Come get your flour and edibles. All right. OG Nation is a one stop shop for all your cannabis needs. So follow them on Instagram at Apish underscore OG. That is at Apish underscore OG. So check this out. If you need any jewelry or cash loans, the holidays are coming up, motherfuckers. Our personal jeweler, D. Leo the Jeweler, has multiple companies who approve financing for his jewelry. Okay, let's say you want jewelry and you want to pay monthly. Well, they use one of their financing companies and they send him the payment and you get your jewelry. It's that easy. Also, if you're low on cash and you need some money for the holidays, they're also offering up to 5K loans with no credit checks, all right? You got three months to pay it back with 0% interest. Nobody's doing that right now. I'm telling you, I may bust on it for a new laptop, okay? Um, <clears throat> There's, yeah, like I said, there's no loan in the world that does it. So for any questions, please feel free to reach out to him on Instagram. That's D.Leo the Jeweler. D.Leo the Jeweler on Instagram. Let's get these likes up, man. Yeah, everybody Come hit that on, like. Man. Dude, we only have 64 I likes. We got 437 likes, of you man. tapped in, dude. We got 437 people. Show Justin some time, love. Man. Show us some love. Okay, we so. We need them likes. We need them likes. We need them likes. All that good shit. All right, well, I'm going to pre- I'm going to prepare for blast off right now, Droopy, all right, and embark on an interdimensional journey of self-discovery and exploration like never before, introducing the exclusive Rick and Morty interdimensional gummies, your passport to inner realms of consciousness, okay? Unlock your mind's eye and allow your senses to finally come alive without the strings that strain our perception of the world, all right? With Rick and Morty gummies, you could experience all of that and more. Make sure you give these dudes a follow on IG, and that is at Rick and Morty Gummies Official. That is at Rick and Morty Gummies Official, and tap in with them on the Telegram for more info. The link is in their bio. Hoodstocks Ooh. is also brought to you by Dying to See Me. Dying to See Me is a podcast that we love and support, so please go on YouTube and hit that subscribe button. Shout, Shout out to Matt. Matt. Shout out to Matt Monahue. Um, and those are the ads, right? Hey, that one, that fool said, uh, J, JG says, Lucky eats Takis with ketchup because it's too <laughs> spicy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they also, they, hey, they also said the homie right here, Justin, got, uh, uh, he's, they said that he stole the uh, Ned Flanders mustache. <laughs> Some shit like hey, that. Hey, someone in the comments says, uh, Droopy's dressed like an orange today. <laughs> H is up. Hey, turn it, can you turn his mic on, Lucky? Oh, shit, my bad, though. Hold on, let's see. Here you go. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. H is everywhere. They know what it is. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do this, fellas. Because I know <laughs> you see it. Hey, check it out. I want to make an announcement right here, and I just got it through the text message, and it is official. This is official right here, guys. And I'm going to tell you like this. Um, hold on one second. Bop, 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 bop. Sunday, December 17th. Check it out. Sunday, December 17th. Hoodstocks, Highland Park Mongols, and Killer Kush are going to be giving out five golden tickets to five kids, to five single mother Mm. kids, okay? 
five golden tickets. And Casey, what are the three levels that involves? And it's a mentorship. It's a beautiful thing, guys. Let's get it. Let's get it. Um, so, so this is going to be um, an event, right, that uh, we're throwing with them. And it's going to be um, five kids who are going to receive the uh, golden ticket, right? And we're going to be introducing them to one of their... Mo- like one of their helpers that will be one of uh one of the mongols that uh i guess they will uh mongols hood stocks yeah, yeah. it'll be and one of us and it's going to be a lot of us it's a mentorship we're day gonna be yeah, up. So we're going to be we're going to be giving advice to the kids and you know have have helping them go through the issues that they have at home and then we will take them to do an act of service and they'll do an act of service by feeding the homeless in uh in the community and then we will be uh, surprising them with a reward at the end. Um, and do you want to tell them about that? Lucky? No, where we, they, they check it out. If you got if you got three big dogs collaborating together to do that just for five kids, you know damn you know damn well the reward is going to be ridiculous. And this is for five mm-hmm. single mothers' kids, um, eighteen or younger. Um, we're going to give you guys more information, but this just came down the pipeline. It is confirmed. We are confirmed for December 17th. And the tickets, the Willy Wonka golden tickets will be uh, pushed out uh, by uh, this week. This week we'll be getting it moving. And this is just still us kind of, <laughs> we're, we're, yeah, we're still we're, rolling it through our head, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out like we thought about this the entire year type of shit. Believe that. Okay, so check it out. Back with Justin Wild Fit Life 805. That's right. Um, so you get it, you 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 start thinking about your kids and making the right decisions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're working some fucking, you know, you're working some jobs. And finally you get into forestry. How did how did that take place? How did you put one foot in front of the other to So real quick there's something that I want to bring up that was in that time we were talking about when I was in construction and whatnot that uh, my home is from my neighborhood at that time when I had custody of my kids. I didn't have a car. I know I was on a bike. Anyway, they stepped up and were helping me out. Wow. Like crazy. And too many people focus on um, the bad side of things or when people get on one or something and, and, and all, the, all the bad stuff, right? But the homies are what helped me with my kids. I'm talking rides to daycare, pick me up, make sure I get to work and back. If you know, and just so much of that was going on right there that creates what is special to me about where I'm from and 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 who we are. You know what I mean? There was there, that was that was huge in my life. So anyway, I just wanted to give a shout out for that because it's it's meaningful. That's love, brother. Yeah, but Good um, dudes. Yeah. So with the fire. Yes. So I had been in construction. Pretty much that's all I ever did was that and kitchen work, you know what I mean? So um, I have a friend who's one of my best friends, has been since I was uh, probably eight years old, who had been in fire already for about 10 years. So we're hanging out one day, and um, he tells me, because I told him, hey, man, what can you do to get me on right there to come be a seasonal or something? And he told me, go get your GED, and then go out to all the stations and hike and work out and make yourself known, and I'll vouch for you when you apply. So I did everything that he told me to do. I started doing that. I went and I bought the GED book. So mind you, I didn't go to high school at all. You know, I think I went there for like two, two months or something like that when the probation let me try to go to regular school, got locked back up and didn't work out. So I went and I bought the GED book, studied it for two weeks. I went and then I passed all the tests in one day. So now I have my GED and I'm going and doing what he's telling me to do with showing up with the crews and making myself known, right? So then I apply and he vouches for me. I get on as a seasonal um, it was a good season. I was busting ass. I wanted to make sure that I, I you know, I made a good, a good impression. So I actually got hired as a permanent that first season. I applied at the end of the season, applied and got uh, hired permanent. It's funny because if it wasn't for my boy Jason Mitchell who vouched for me, I wouldn't be in that job because the captain at the time we were drinking at the end of the season, and he told me, you know what, you come into my station, bald head and tattooed. I wouldn't have given you the the job if it wasn't for Jason. He told me, you know what I mean? Just being straight up. And, but he was saying that as a backwards compliment to turn around and say, but it was one of the best decisions I've ever made <laughs> to bring you on. Amazing. You know what I mean? So it was good. It was a compliment in itself, but um, and then it took off from there. I just, uh, I stayed invested, man. Um, to speak about working out in regards to that, I, that's when I used to just lift heavy all the time. 
you know, and uh, it was a no-go. I found out and got my shit pushed in the first time up the hill wearing the gear. I told Jason, I was like, oh, I'll be good, man. Um, I work out, do squats, all this shit all the time. My legs are going to be good. They beat me by like 20 minutes up the hill. Wow. You know what I mean? So anyway, a lot of that changed my whole style of working out. Over time, I started adding, I didn't want to stop weightlifting because I love it. Yeah. So I incorporated my own style, you know what I mean? So I do a lot of dumbbell and weightlifting work mixed in with burpees. Yeah. And running and hiking. So kind of where I started creating my style of working out that you see on Instagram. Well, so many, that's, that's an interesting, uh, that's so, very interesting what you said right there. Like you were strong, you can probably lift more weight on squats than them, but maybe their endurance and stamina, their different type of- Oh uh, yeah, they're like uh, fucking- was they're Like fucking on a different level. Yeah, they're like 6'3", 150 pounds, you know what I mean? Okay. So I'm 5'9", yeah. two. I was 230 at the time. Yeah. So it was a big difference. Yeah. And I was just lifting, that's what, that was my thing. I loved lifting heavy. Um, I had gotten away from the running and the burpees for a while, I was just real into that. You know, I'd go work construction, come home and lift weights in my, I, had a, I used to have a bench in my bedroom and stuff. So let's, let's. who are you working for now at this time? You're working for the, the dude that gave you the compliment. He's obviously your fire chief. Or he retired. He retired, but at the time he is your- Captain. Your captain, there you go. Yeah. He's your captain and you're fighting forest fires. Yeah. Uh, California, country, uh, across the U.S.? No, yeah, I work for the Forest Service, so we're federal. So we go You're all, federal? Yeah, we go all over the nation. That's amazing, bro. It is, yeah. It's amazing. Um, how is the pay? The pay is shit. We're actually fighting for it right now. Yeah. it's uh, We get paid like the Army, where they get paid like shit, too. We're on a GS scale. So um, put it this way, our backseat firefighters are still fighting to get $15 an hour. Wow, bro. You know what I mean? You know what? That, that shit... No bullshit. That shit breaks my heart to hear that. It's a bad thing. You don't even get 15 if you're not, like where I live at or on the coast right here, you get a, what's it called, a locality pay. So it actually bumps you up to like 15, 16 bucks an hour if you're in the back seat. But if you live in like fucking Kern or the Sequoias or I don't know exactly where, but you know, different areas that, Kern don't, County. that don't get that locality pay because yeah. they're, it doesn't cost as much as to live, they're making like 12, 13 bucks an hour, I, I believe. I know when I started oh in fire, God. I went from twenty two dollars an hour in construction down to eleven twenty five an hour. So why did you do that? Because I knew that I could get insurance for my kids, and it was stable. No matter what, I was going to get my eighty hours every two weeks. And, so, it, and it was something that you loved to do. Obviously, you had a passion for it. I mean, what was? Yeah. It? Um, did you like? Do you like fighting fire? Do I you like being love in the force? You love it. Then. I there love you go. it. But at the yeah. time, it was worth. Like I knew that I had loved it from when I was in camp. Remember, I told you I had got I, juvenile that's where, camp. Yeah, that's where I first got yeah. in, introduced to it. So I knew I wanted to do it. And when he told me all that, and I got in, I just I fell in love with it, man. And it was worth it. And you make you can make decent money if you work a shitload of overtime. But damn, you ain't got no life. I feel it. I mean, you can make a shitload of money working a shitload of overtime anywhere, doing anything. Yeah. You know, you just ain't got no fucking life, bro. Yeah, bro. When we when I when I fought fires at 18 years old out of Susanville. First time in in the penitentiary, um, I made when we fought fires. We made a dollar a day, which was great money. You know, we made a dollar a day. That was a scale. Yeah, a dollar a day fighting fires. You get and three dollars on the saw, right? What's that? You get like two or three dollars if you're on the saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're on a saw, uh, I was like, uh, I was like. Man, bro, I was like third Pulaski. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting line, right? Yeah. Pulaski, like yeah. you, you know what the fucking Pulaski is, yeah. right? It's a it's a tool for cutting line. It's an axe with the little other like opposite side for digging. Yeah, and it's basically just like you know, well, every man in a in a in a cutting line for a fire has to do their job, you know. Yeah, it's us one. You know what? I was trying to. I was in Susanville, and I was. I got kicked out of fucking four uh, fire camps. Finally, they kept me in Camp Ishi, and it, and they said this is your last chance because I wanted to be in the yard with the fellas, you know. And it was active on the yard, you know. It was nothing but. It was the time when there was, we were with the. There was solid North Daniels right there. One side of the yard is red. One side of the yard is blue. And this is when you could flag when you had the baños. So these dudes were flamed up. We were blued up. It was just a different time. A lot of fucking politics of in that bitch. And there's firefighter homies going in and out. I was like, man, fuck that. I ain't trying to fight no fires. I won't be right here with the fellas, you know, because yeah. it was like a movie right there. Real right. shit. And um, 
got kicked out of camps and I know this isn't about me, but I want to share this a little no, bit, yeah. but I ended up going to a camp Ishi and they said, this is the last camp you're going to go to, you know? And, and I guess it was like a disciplinary camp. And I went there and I found out that it was the best camp that I was at. Cause it was all the fuck ups were there, bro. Oh, there and we had too much fun, bro. <laughs> bro, we were finding weed fucking, we we're finding grows out there. So we had a fucking big old black bag of fucking weed at the bottom of a hill. After count time, one dude would run down there, snatch his shit up, bring it up. We'd be rolling it up. Dogs. That's right. Bro, we were fucking, man, we go in a fucking, we go, uh, you know, uh, during the, when there's no fires, we're on the grade, right? You know what I mean? So we're doing shit for like Caltrans, cleaning up the roads. Are we going into the, you know, we're in, out there in Humboldt County, so we go into the camp places, bro, and clean up the camps, but there's still people camping right there. So, uh, you know, I ain't going to say who, but a lot of the homies would be, you know what I mean? The, the, you know, you know, we're just out there with the fire captain. We're not out there with the COs or anything right. like that. And so we'd be fucking getting the motherfuckers RVs and shit. <laughs> 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 we'd be getting the motherfuckers RVs, bro. We'd be That's fucking right. jacking the food. We'd be getting money, homie. You know what I mean? And then after a while, we have X amount of money. And and there was this fucking market, bro. And I remember this one dude. He was a fucking nut. But we saved up all this money that we found out on the grade. Like you, you, you wouldn't imagine what you find on the side of the highway. You find all kinds of shit yeah. um but anyways uh we had the homie go to this fucking this uh market with all the money we found and he took his shit off and he tried to walk in he put some beer in the counter and shit <laughs> 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 and the fucking and the uh the dude that had the little market the little town market or whatever in the middle of the woods as soon as he seen him he just started fucking fumbling his fucking phone dog oh, fuck. yeah to call the cops <laughs> on him bro but we just we Damn. really had a lot of fun one time we good found time. this good is the, no this is a good one bro one time we found a g string on the grade right you know <laughs> and so we take this little fucking these sexy little panties back right and the homie goes in the bathroom and he and he wipes his ass with it right Fuck. right where the right where the fucking the the, the you know yeah. the, the the package the female package is supposed to be <laughs> and then he gave it to the white boys and he goes hey check out these <laughs> uh, check out this g-string i found out there and all the white boys were like oh my god it smells just <laughs> like oh, <laughs> and the homie just it smelled like doo-doo bro yeah. it was <laughs> probably one of the funniest moments that I can remember, bro. I fucking, we were yeah. laughing. The ones that knew, bro, we were just <laughs> fucking laughing because he's dumb. Ass, you, know, you know, white boys, they, they mother of the woods, bro, the wood pile, them mothers are savages and they're funny as fuck and they would have done us the same way they, too. They dog. find out then and they're finding out now, that's funny <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> it was hilarious, <laughs> dog. Uh, one of them took it to the bathroom and jacked off to it. No! <laughs> Jack it out to the homie's ass juice, bro. <laughs> Fucked up, bro. But um, anyways, so... Fuck You're, you, Lucky. Oh, dog. You know, every it, 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 even when you... Man, it's always got to be good times, bro. You make... So, you're fighting these fires. Um, let, tell us about some of the fires that you fought. So, um, I, I've been lucky enough. I was on a helicopter crew for a couple years. That's dope. And so, that is a, a lower quantity. Like, there's not as many of those as there is engines or even crews, right? So you get called to different places more often. Are you considered a hot shot? No, I'm on an engine. Okay. Yeah, so I'm... So what's the difference between a hot shot and someone who's on an engine? Well, I actually run a crew, too. So the difference with a hot shot crew is um, it's the qualifications of the leadership. So Do they get paid more? No. The hand crew's the same, but just the, the overhead. So like the captain and the squatty and all these people, they have qualifications that make them available to do different things on fire so when you get on a hot shot crew you're working under them so you get to go do better things actually yeah because those dudes are like they call them and why do they call them hot shots i don't even know just because they're mean. fucking they, they're doing the crazy <laughs> shit yeah I because guess. i remember fighting fires and we're that we're the inmate crews and then they would bring these hot shots in and the hot shots would be like they'd be doing some so, wild shit bro yeah so the type two crews hot shot crews engines helicopter crews everybody does the same job right but the hot shot crews is they're nonstop on me, all season long. Like, you know, with the engines, there's more engines. So when you come back to where your local area is, you're in a rotation of who gets to go out off, off forest next, for example. Gotcha. So then you have to wait your turn, right? You know, other engines are going, things cracking off wherever they go. But the hot shot crews, there's only so many of them. So those folks are gone all the time. Through the fire season, like if you're on a, if you're on a hot shot crew, the, 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 super t the superintendent will tell you, you're committing to me for six months. They'll be gone for two, three weeks, come home for two days, gone again. All season long, 
most of the time. So that's what's gnarly about being on a hot shot crew. Is it's it's all season, every season. Damn. Yeah, they do. They do work, man. So we would worry about when we were fighting these fires, a lot of the dudes would get sent back to the yard on a on medical because uh, you had to watch out for trees falling. Yeah. That was the main thing we always, I always like. That's liked. still the most dangerous thing that we do. It's the trees, right? Yeah, it is. Because a lot of time we control where we're at with the fires. You know, you can't control Mother Nature. Sometimes wind shifts and shit gets out of control that you didn't expect. But for the most part, we can keep ourselves in, if we follow the rules that we're supposed to be going by, then we can keep ourselves in good situations and we can put fire on the ground, fight fire with fire, stay in front of it, you know? But it's the trees, especially around here with all the drought and all the dead trees. People people get hurt all the time. From the trees. From the trees. Die. Yeah. They die. Yeah, it's because yeah. the limbs will fall out of the top. If you're dropping a tree, you really got to be careful because if it's even if it's, if it's got fire in it or if it's dead, the top can fall off. You know, So that's the most dangerous part of the job. Bro, I'm telling you, dog. It's probably one of my greatest experiences was fighting those fires. Yeah. Like you're in a valley of two mountains, bro. You're in a valley of two mountains. One mountain is on fire. This side, you're cutting lines so it doesn't kick, uh, jump over to the fucking other yeah. side of the mountain. And you're cutting this line. You're looking up, too, for the trees because I knew during that time that they said, watch the trees because dudes were getting badly hurt, bro. Yeah, you got it. And then we'd see him come to the yard. When I was in the yard, oh, that fool got hit by a tree. So yeah. I was, I looked out for the trees like a motherfucker. But it's such a trip, though, because we'd be cutting line, bro. And then all of a sudden, the, the animals, oh, like yeah. the wild animals, are running. They're smart as fuck. They're running, bro. Yeah, you, right past you, bro. Damn. Yeah. You'll be surprised. You you don't you hardly see them dead out there. Like the deer, the bear, all that shit. They get out of the way. They're smart. Well, that's the problem that I had, bro. Is like, we're in their house, bro. They're getting the fuck out, dog. Why are we following them, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't we following them, bro? Yeah. Bro, I, I swear to God, dog. Real estate. These dudes, um, bears, everything, you see them, and they're running right past you. <laughs> they don't even give a fuck about you. <clears throat> no, they don't give a fuck. <laughs> no. Like he said, they're smart, and they know that it's time to go. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. So we had these, we had a couple, uh, here I am telling my fire stories, but I just, good. I, I like, I, I love doing it so much, bro, and there's so great memories in my past that I like sharing them. But, yeah. um, so we're finding this fire. And we got this fucking little tweaked out hotshot dude. He's he's our uh, crew boss. Mm, we have our captain, our inmate captain, yeah. right from our from our camp. But this fire was so bad that they gave us some of the other guys, right? Mm. You know, with chainsaws because we got our chainsaw oh, guys. But but our chainsaw guys aren't cutting these fucking big dog trees down, bro. Right. You feel me? Yeah, you gotta call them like beef haulers. Yeah, like so they they gave us this little tweaked out white boy and his and his and his buddy, right? And I was like, what the fuck's this fool gonna do? And then we started thinking, like, shit, we gotta get some dope from this fool. This fool high as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. The fire the fire jumps the line, bro. We get caught up in a firestorm, mm. right? And so you know how they have those fucking foil bags? Yeah, the shelters, yeah. Yeah, you gotta deploy like last fucking, yeah. that's just like the 911 of 911s when you're fighting fires. Yeah. You gotta deploy that fucking little. Uh, last thing you wanna do. Yeah, the last thing you wanna do, right? And so it jumped the line. And so here we are caught up in a firestorm on the side of a fucking mountain. And this little tweaked out motherfucker, bro, who he was a fucking little saving grace. He was a bad motherfucker. This motherfucker had a chainsaw longer than him, bro. The fucking, the, the thing on that bitch was crazy, dog. And he's got us a fucking, because he's got to clear these trees, bro, and give us a safe spot, bro. So he starts it, and then his little fucking buddy is fucking knocking in the little fucking shims or whatever you call that shit, yeah. you know, because they're gonna they, they're like we're gonna lay that tree right there, dog. Yeah. Even though that tree's laying that way, we're gonna lay it over there, yeah. you know. And it's all about how you cut that bitch, yeah. right? It's one of my favorite parts of the job. Yeah, yeah. So these dudes are just fucking dropping trees, boom, boom, boom. Fires are coming everywhere. Everyone's like, <laughs> cuddle in. It's a fucking like a fucking movie, dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we're getting get ready. We might have to deploy right now, like these fucking things and it was a fucking adrenaline rush i was like this is fucking badass bro yeah. and i'm in fucking prison yeah you know and and long story short little tweaker dude and his buddy fucking clear us a nice fucking spot and so then they made us a hell of a spot hell what do you call it hell of a spot hell of a spot to get picked up from the helicopter to get picked up for the helicopter bro yeah. and here comes the helicopter That's you know sick, and, and, and 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 i was like fuck 
this is damn, bro. This is something. I couldn't even make this shit up, dog. Yeah. I'm fucking in prison doing yeah. my first term. <laughs> J94506, you know? Yeah. And, and 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 fuck, I get in the helicopter and they pull us up and bam, drop us off, come back, get in a couple more crew members. Fucking amazing. And honestly, I told myself, I said, you know, when I get out, I'm gonna be a firefighter. You know, but <laughs> hey, yeah. it's I a real thing though. I try. I wanted to be a firefighter. I try to help out homies but I all got the time. Out, I got out and I was back in the hood with fucking. What happens? These fucking animals right here, dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? They were lighting fires. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Um, two things to go off of that is uh, last year, beginning of the season. I think it was last. No, you know what? Is is the season before that? But anyway, because of the way we get paid, we're losing qualified people by the drones, you know what I mean? So that like, people are leaving, tired of fighting for the money. So the people who are in charge of putting where the line goes or having the amount of people that we need to aggressively fight fire, we don't have. So we have to back off, for example, right? Yeah. Well, that shit put us in a bad spot. And you see it more and more as time progresses with the people leaving that we don't have the forces we need to do it. So like, we got cut off by the fire, had to, um, had to hit our escape route, run from it. It was, uh, it's happening more often than than it used to. Like I said, because we could we could be in front of it, but nowadays with us losing, like we we shouldn't we should have had enough people to where we should have cut that fire off before it got to where it was. But we had to keep holding back and holding back because we didn't have the people, so we were waiting for it to do something specific, and it fucking turned, which is Mother Nature. You can't beat, you know what I mean. So that just goes with the whole pay thing that you can't really. Uh, can't keep people employed in it. Nobody wants to stay. And you go to Cal Fire. Cal Fire is way better of a fucking agency. They have better contracts. Their guys get to hotel up when they're gone. Shit. They eat better. Um, per diem. They we, per we diem? get per diem. No, they oh. get actual hotels. So they they'll be on the line for twenty four hours, and then they'll be in a hotel for twenty four hours back and forth the whole time they're gone on an assignment. Right. The Forest Service. We go on the line every single day, and then we go sleep in a tent or on the ground. Fuck. You know what I mean, and then and, and get paid like fucking one third of what they make. It's uh, it is what it is. With that being said, if you want to jump in the Forest Service, <laughs> <laughs> but I help out a lot of homies. You know, the, there's a way to get in, and I get people messaging me all the time. And regardless of the money, it's a it's a good life. You know what I mean? You're doing something that's that you can feel good about. You're gonna make money if you're willing to go do the hours. But if you want in, go around here to the Forest Service stations. And find out how to get on a Type Two crew. Get your GED or something. All you need is a high school diploma or a GED, and then go get on these Type Two crews anywhere that you're at. Find out how to get in. Go do the work, and then that's your foot in the door. And then from there, you'll learn how to apply for the Forest Service or Cal Fire, and then you'll have experience and you can get in and start a career. That's with a record or not. You know, you can't be a fucking arsonist or shit like that. But yeah. Well, if it's, if if you uh, you're from the federal side, which is federally funded, right? Right. Damn. That's why it's shit? Why? But usually yeah, it's they're, just huh? like the army. Yeah, it's because their uh, their minimum wage is lower. Well, yeah, because if you think about it, like the uh, the municipal departments, like you know Montecito, right? That's a rich ass community. So those municipal firefighters that work for that community are funded by that community. So those guys make a lot of money. Uh, they got brand new engines, brand new equipment. Fancy little fucking tracking devices, all the little shit they need, you know? Fuck, dog. And then we try to get the hand me downs. That's a cold <laughs> shot, bro. <laughs> That's a cold shot, dog. Yeah. Fire, fire. And so, so you, <laughs> speaking of, I was going to say something about the, the, uh, uh, in regards to the pay for police officers, but you were in a fight with a police officer. You did a boxing match with a police oh, okay, officer. Okay, so that's one of the best parts of my job right there. I get so I do the battle of badges. So okay. I, I get to go fight cops in the ring. I've only done it a couple of times. The, the events that I was doing it at got canceled because of money, but I did it two years in a row, and then I was going to keep doing it, but like I said, it got canceled. So I want to do it again, but it's just a hobby for me. I, I like say, fighting, and then that was great. Have you, so uh, when you prepare for one of these uh, boxing matches or the two boxing matches you've been in. I mean, have you had prior experience? Are you training for it? Like it's, you know. The, so, uh, yeah, you train for it like a real fight. Yeah. yeah right. You so, don't want to uh, lose, right? You're, no, represent, a, you're representing, the, the you know. Yeah, the, it's a fight. You know what I mean? So, well, you, But it is a fight, but you're representing. Fire against cops. Yeah. 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 So, so um, the, the, the brothers are counting on you. The firefighter brothers are saying, bro, yeah. don't lose. So, yeah, it's, it's a good thing. And, and. You, I, so I, I didn't do it before. I grew up doing like um, 
kickboxing just for working out and stuff like that, but I had never fought in the ring before. So my boy who owns a gym hit me up and he's like, hey, I'm going to put on this event, Battle of Badges. Do you want to box? I'm like, fuck it, I'll do it. So then I had like a few months to train. I started training. And then uh, the other guy had never boxed either. So we beat the shit out of each other. It was kind of, it was, a, it was a good one, man. We, we, he, I, he showed me a picture of it, yeah, bro. He broke, fucking, he, the dude is way bigger than him, bro. And they're fucking battered, bro. And then we beat the <laughs> fuck out of each other. It was good. It was one of my favorite fights I've ever been in. Um, and then the next year I got the main event. Good times. Yeah, the next year I got the main event because we both got main events from that from what that fight was. So the next year I got because the, it was such a it was a it was a, it was dog a fucking fight. brawl. It was a brawl. Yeah. yeah, fuck, it was good. Uh, but the next year I got that, and then uh, so the guy I fought who was undefeated, and it was good. And I ended up getting the uh, the TKO or knockout. I dropped him in the third round. So okay. that, was, that was a good experience. Which a different which a different uh, a di- opponent. A different guy. Yeah. Yeah. The first one I lost split decision, but in my defense, three of the judges were cops. You yeah. can watch it. Yeah. It's a. I don't think I won, but I didn't lose. Yeah, we just beat the fuck out of each other until the end, <laughs> straight up. <laughs> no foot, no footwork. Just yes, yeah, so it was a just, three to two vote. You know what I mean? But but like, is it is it like, is it like no footwork, bro? Just you guys are in front of each other. Just there's attempted footwork, <laughs> which might have made it worse. You know what I mean? <laughs> which makes it worse. Yeah. Like, bro. So no, we were training. You know, we did it. We did it. Um, the next year, I, I I learned a lot about being boxing in the ring because it's just all from the shoulders. It's all from the shoulders. Yeah, you just fucking box and hips. And feet. Well, you figure that out after the first fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so, so it's just, you know, there's so much training to it, just keeping your hands And I've up. never trained, bro, but I just, I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a fan of the. I love the sport now. Of I'm the sport, bro, where I watch it. Yeah. And, you know, you got to have, you got to, yeah, from the shoulders, you got to move your hips yeah. and you got to move your feet. I love it. Yeah, now, it. if I were to get into a ring right now, dog, you know what I mean? I might not move none of them, doggy. You know what I mean? And just, yeah. you know. You're fucked, man. This kid, uh, I was sparring, getting ready for my no fight. No professionals, but I'm not trying, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. But I was sparring with this kid, getting ready for the fight, and he must have been, I think I was probably in my late, I was like 35, 30, I, mean, I don't even know how long it was, but I was in my late 30s. And this kid must have been like 19 or 20 years old, and we were going to spar. This little fucker was so fast, he just fucking, right when we got in, he just popped me in the nose. I didn't know my head movement, you know what I mean? I thought yeah. I was just going to push this kid around, but... Boxing's a, it's like game, it's like playing a game of chess and getting punched in the face the whole time. Did you watch the Ryan Garcia fight last night? No. Sweet, dude. What's that? You thought it was weak? Yeah, I think he's like, I don't know. I, I mean, don't like I, the way he hunched over on that fight, bro. Yeah. Like, I didn't he, see like it. he really just hunched over and like. He said he had a broken rib or something, right? Or no, is that what he said? Yeah. Uh, oh, shit. I don't know. I just didn't like, I'm not a fan of Ryan Garcia yeah, at like, all, bro. Yeah, I thought he was either. really going to take off in the game. And the way he looked, uh, you know, a couple years ago. Well, he's like a, he's like a highlight reel in the gym, right? Or in his living room, yeah. You know, doing all those fucking super quick, super fast. Right. Uh, who knows where he goes, bro? You know, I know I know him and uh, Oscar De La Hoya are at odds. You know what I mean? They're he's under Oscar De La Hoya, but they're just fucking like they got some beef going on, and that that can't be healthy uh, for him for his mind. You know, uh, have, you know, it, yeah. It, it seems a little messy, bro. But uh, he fought a good fight, bro. I'm not a fan of his. But he fought a good fight. I have to check it out. Yeah, yeah. But I, oh, yeah. I man, I love, I love boxing. Is it, it does it hurt more? Um, well, not hurt more, bro. But what's the difference of getting punched with a fist on the street and then being? Uh, and I've had professional boxers on here before, but I'll ask you, bro, since you've fucking done the rock and sock and robots with yeah, the cops and so shit. Much. I mean, how how much harder does it hurt with a with a glove, bro? You know, I don't. I don't think Do it you hurt get more. Used it's to different it? because it's more like a. Um, if you get hit square, you still get that feeling in the back of your mouth. You know what I mean? Just like if you get punched with the fist. So, so. you got to have a good punch, bro, to rock somebody. Uh, yeah, and you got to hit them in the right spot. Okay. You know, otherwise, it's, if you watch a lot of boxing, it's a lot of just fucking points. You know, tapping here, tapping there. But if you get someone square on with that, so you got like a Mike Tyson or something. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. I'm not saying it doesn't. It doesn't. Doesn't hurt, Whoa. but. It's got if you get hit square on, it feels like a fist similar. Similar, I feel like because you, know, you see, regular. yeah, no, for but sure. It's about the spot though, because you know, even in the sides, if you're getting hit in the sides real good, the, even though there's that padding there, take your wind away if they hit you right. Yeah. Um, well, I got a gym I'm going to be going to pretty soon, and I, we got we actually the podcast has an, the Hoodstocks has an open invitation to go to uh, uh what is it uh, Knucklehead uh, Boxing Punk Rock Boxing Gym in Whittier. Mm. Ooh. There you go. Yeah, we all got a, we got to open because I, I told him I, I well you know I started like kind of like trying to lose some weight and and stop drinking with I haven't really lost weight but I've lost I've lost 
inches though if that makes sense because I stopped drinking bro so yeah. the, the uh, uh, what do you call it when you drink you get uh, inflammation yep. yeah. I had I had a lot of inflammation that's dog. crazy that's yeah. a fucking thing yeah. yeah so actually my waist got smaller but I've, I haven't really I've lost a couple pounds bro um, but anyways I want to take it to the next step I just started my keto and I want to go to the gym and so I asked homie I said hey bro if I pull up you got some dudes that will spar with me you know, because I just want, I want to go in there and I want to fucking, you know what I mean? You want to throw punches? That's yeah. how you learn. Yeah, you're not, you're Better not. watch out. Oh, that's the only way Some to learn. Some of them dudes are throwing punches, you're Trying bro. to get your head <laughs> hit, dude? Well, well I'll, Look, put a, I'll put headgear on, dog. Hey, no Still lie. Still doesn't help. Hey, Apish is on there, dog. Yeah, you I see watch him. Apish, yeah. he's on there, dog, and the motherfuckers are throwing punches. Yeah, no, I know, I see him, dog. I yeah. see him, but I want to do it, bro, because I've always wanted to do that, and I'm not trying to do it to compete or or sport, but I just want to do it because I feel like I feel like any man would want to do that, bro. Yeah. And it's not me thinking of other men of what they want to do; it's what I want to do, bro. You want to get in there? I want to get hit. I'll bro. be your coach. That's Fuck. good to know. I already got the outfit. Hey, we're Mickey. I'll be Mickey. We're putting Casey in there. I'll be Mickey right there, right no? That's right. Yeah, I'll be Mick. Hey, hey Mick. Fuck. <laughs> hey, Mick, I'm you seeing. Got him I got him, hey, You can make him a room. Hey, Mick, I got birds <laughs> floating around my head right now, Mick. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, what the fuck? <laughs> <All right. laughs> <laughs> they could show you up a road. You know? They're like, why you got your trainer on your shoulders? I'm like, I don't know, dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, well, bro, fucking man, fighting movies, man. Growing up, blood sport. Was that is that one uh, of the best? Like if you're uh, are yeah, you Van Damme? Are we around the same age? I'm 41. You're 41? Alright, we're around the same age, bro. But blood sport, bro. Bloods, blood. Yeah, blood those sport were the best back then. Was huh? Those were the best back then. And then the all the Rocky too. movies. Yeah. It's not it's not like that anymore. Yeah. And now it's all this too Van fast. Damme, and all that shit. shit. I was such a dumb kid, bro, that I thought the movies were real. So when they asked me, when I was a kid, and they asked me who my favorite uh, boxer was, I would say Rocky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, just, <laughs> idiot. Uh, I'm just fucking with you guys. Yeah, I know you guys would like that shit. <laughs> Who's your favorite fu fucking Rocky, Rocky bro? Dog? Yeah, well, I don't know, fuck. I think fight, Rocky. He fights out of Philadelphia. Yeah. <laughs> Rocky still made me my favorite boxer. <laughs> Well, I wonder how good Sylvester Stallone is in boxing. After doing so many movies, bro, come on. That he's dude's gotta got to be skilled. He's got to be a beast, bro. He's got to be skilled, dude. He ain't skilled like that. You don't he's think that? It was some real shit and get fucked up, dog. Well, he wasn't skilled in the movies. Well, he could just take his like ass like beating. <laughs> well, you know what? There's a, there's a, there's a movie. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's an interview that Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hall? Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Who? Hulk, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. Yeah, no, say it right, hey, bro. Listen here, brother. Hulk Hogan. There you go. Brother. Yeah. <laughs> he did he talked about meeting Sylvester Stallone because he was in a Rocky movie, remember? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. So he talked about meeting him and and that fool, you know, that fool uh, Sylvester Stallone back then, like he was the big dog, yeah. you know? And I think it kind of got to his head where he thought he was like he thought he was a real fighter, you know? So he met Hulk Hogan, and he thought Hulk Hogan was kind of a joke. And Hulk Hogan tells this story about meeting him, and he, and that fool was like, hey, hey, Hogan, hit me, you know, hit me like a real man, you know? Like, he, they had, like, a little fucking something going oh, on shit. behind the scenes, you know? But uh, it's a good story that he shares. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but... um, Puts Joe. work in his ass, huh? What was your favorite, what, what was your favorite uh, movie, Rick, growing up? Like, the fighting movie that inspired you? Like, fuck, I want to take over the world. I want to save my mom. I want to save my nah, brothers. The, the Rocky movies were the shit. They were the dog. shit, That's huh? The Rockies fucking were the best with. ones, yeah. I mean, fuck. They you were. know we're fucking it's, with Rocky, dog. Straight up. Is that like the American fucking dream For, of a I movie? Mean, at our I time, mean, it is. That was our time. What well, about Karate Kid? Karate Kid yeah. ain't got nothing on him? I mean, that was cute, but that's a different level. Yeah, Daniel was Daniel LaRusso, dog? Daniel Sun? Daniel Sun! Wax on, wax on, motherfucker. That's cute. And a cute story, but the Rocky one, everybody can relate with that's in the struggle, too. You know, it's just. Wax Coming from nowhere doesn't need anything, just fucking him, you know? And they're all set up the same way, if you yeah. think about it. He was the underdog. Yeah, you and know? he loses everything, got to yeah. build it back up. Yeah, yeah, bro. But that's what it is. That's what we grew up on. Dog. Okay, what about like uh, Asian, like Kung Fu, like martial art movies? Do you think any of those are badass? Bruce Lee's a beast. I still I like say blood sport, no, bro. Yeah. I, and I fuck with Bruce Lee, dog? Nobody Bruce can fuck Lee. with him, dog. That fool's like water, dog. You know what I mean? That if we ain't got water, beast. we're going to be dehydrated, dog. You know what I mean? Need water, bro. Bruce Lee's <laughs> yeah, a beast, shit. dog. Yeah. Nobody fucking with that. Nah, fool. 
That fool was a real. I don't know Chuck Norris, huh? They were saying he could kick his ass, huh? Bruce Lee? Fuck, fuck this kid. I don't fucking Bro, think you that. know who will fuck all. <laughs> yeah, nah. You doing that. Come on, dog. You know who will fuck all them fools up? Steven Seagal, bro. Oh, fuck. Stop hey, it, everybody, you just say that shit. It's Steven Seagal. Fuck. Steven Seagal. Was he Stop the. It, was it that me. Richard Pryor's girl? Was it? No, Steven Seagal. Was he the biggest joke in martial arts, bro, he back in the day? Was. Yeah, that fool became a cop. He did become a cop. Yeah, like in Vegas or something like that. He did a show about him and shit. Well, he d he studied an art of uh, oh, something. Yeah. It was I think it was called Hapkido. No, yeah. Hapkido. Hapkido. Hapkido, where it's like they grab your hand and they break it. or And there's actual videos of this dude Bruce doing Lee's this shit. Beast, though, Bruce and it's beast. fucking comedy, bro. It's really hilarious. I think he. I think Steven Seagal was a like, laughing laughing stock in the oh, yeah. martial art world, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and you know who his sister is? No. Fucking Peg. Oh, really? Married with children. No way. Yeah, her Peggy last name. Bundy? Yeah. I didn't know that. Shut the fuck That's up. That's Steven Seagal's sister, bro. Uh, her last name the... is Seagal. That's Look it up, fool. Yeah, I Look it up. That. Look it up, Al Casey. Bundy's? Al Bundy's, Al Bundy's wife. <laughs> Al Bundy's <laughs> wife is Steven Seagal's fucking sister, dog. Show us. Show That's us, That's crazy. Casey, show us. Casey's gonna show us right now. He's that looking crazy. at that. I didn't never knew that. Was she one of the most sexiest bitches back in the day, bro? Come on. Ooh, she was, uh, she was the symbol Seagal. of that time of her sexy Ooh, wife. Ooh, Katie Seagal. Katie Seagal. Katie are they, Seagal. Are they related? Let me see. They gotta be related. They Seagal. Seagal, Seagal. I never even heard that. That's crazy. She was a bad... She was like the Kim Who Kardashian that? back in Where'd the days. Where'd you get that from, Lucky? Hey, you know, bro, I'm kind of like a historian, dog. You know what I mean? I, I got all this information. Uh, that, you know what I mean? a historian. Yeah, bro. You know what I mean? I'm like a file cabinet, bro. There you go. You know, I just there retain information. Look at him. The historian. Well, you know, bro, I just retain just so much information, dog, because I'm, I'm you know, borderline genius, dog. You know what can I say? Oh, there you go. Oh, his favorite fuck. boxer is Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you know what? I couldn't pass a test for the life of me, but I know some fucking miscellaneous information. Don't it? Right. it wouldn't even get me a job. Um, is it, are they related, Casey? Uh, what the fuck, dog? Yeah. He's fucking see. looking right Casey now. Seagal, he's they are right. not related. Uh, oh. Oh. You had me too, homie. I believed it. I believed it. Funky spit lies, that fucking genius. Fucking lucky. I uh, know. Well, what the <laughs> this fuck? This how dog? you do us, lucky. I, well, they have the same last name, right? Seagal is They spell different. Hers is S A G A L and she's Stevens is S E A G A L. He's a Seagal. Well, that was, it was fucking close enough. All right, close, guys, right in the podcast because Lucky's fucking ignorance. Uh, <laughs> Seagal and Seagal, bro. Just, just when I was, just when I thought I was a file cabinet, dog. You would thought you were the greatest. <laughs> well, now you are, though. Now you know that. You know what I mean? Just added some shit to it. Well, thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank you. We got somebody positive here on the show today. Thank you. Hey, <laughs> fuck <laughs> these assholes over here. Turn fuck these him. motherfucking <laughs> likes up. Let's get some likes in this. Hey, yeah. so you start you so you so you start fighting fires. Let me you know. So Whoa. what have you so you when did you decide so you did it for sixteen years? I'm doing it, yeah, I'm still doing it. I've been doing it sixteen years. Sixteen years, bro. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. That's a long time I'm in the committed. business. Yeah, I'm committed. The fire business. Yeah. How do you feel about people that start fires? Um I don't really care. I mean, if they, I mean, if it, it's, it's, is it really, bro? Is it really people starting these fires, bro? Or is it the no, fucking, fucking underpaid arson. federal fucking firefighters starting these fires, bro? Both, both things, man. People Jesus get busted for that shit all the time. Do they? Man. Yeah. Has a ever, has a firefighter ever gotten busted for starting a fire? Yeah. I was in the academy with some guy who started some up north where it killed somebody and he got life. Damn. Yeah. That's the thing that's fucked up. You know what I mean? But I hear weird things about arsonists. You know what I mean? They get off on it on a whole other level. You know, they sit on the other side of the hill and they, that's their thing. So there's weirdos out there. But the thing when you fuck with something in mass scale like that, like fire, you never know where it's going to go. And what, what would you fucking kill a kid? Something like that. These people. So I, have, I don't like it. Why are kids... I played with fire when I was a kid. Did you? No. No, I played with fire. Yeah, no, I didn't. We used to light things on fire, me and my cousins. Yeah. And, and it was something It was like within the women in my family because we were, you know raised by women on my side of the family, um, it was like, you won't get your ass beat. You know, we got our ass beat for starting some fires at my grandma's house. Yeah. But kids like playing with fires. Yeah, kids don't know any better. Yeah. But it, I've, it always crosses my mind because there's a certain time, there's something we call fire season. Yeah. And so 
is it fire season because that's when all the fucking uh, uh, no, uh, pyromaniacs related. come out to play? You know, oh. it's, it's weather related, but it, you know, a lot of times that's when people are out camping and they don't put their campfires out right. Wind picks up and it does start shit. And people dragging their chains that starts shit. Those are the biggest two things. Is Smokey the Bear a real thing? Does he talk? Is it a bear that talks, bro? It what is a bear the hell? That talks. It is a bear that talks. I was just gonna ask him, dude. So do you know Smokey? I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, well come smokes. on, bro. We, me and you, we on the same fucking wavelength. Dude, baby. I even showed Rick. <laughs> Big smoke. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> Is Smokey the Bear real? Is Be it? honest. Yeah. Have you met Smokey the Bear before? I haven't met him. But you know people that have had a conversation with Smokey the I've Bear. Heard, yeah. And does he wear that little hat and have the little fucking uh, Boy sure, Scout thing? I'm sure you could put whatever you want on him. Hmm. I heard he has <laughs> his red rocket. You know, but it out. is a real bear, though. You know that. It is a real bear. Yeah. Where does where, what's the origins of Smokey oh, the Bear? I wouldn't remember the exact spot. There's a station that has where they had all that stuff at, and it was actually a rescued bear from a fire. Nice. Yeah. So they got it when it was a little cub, and it was burnt and shit. And yeah. They saved it, and it was a whole thing. So it's actually a cool story. Google it. What does it Good take? Shit. What does what does it take to be a, 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 a someone that fights fires, bro? Like not anybody can do that. Um. I, I don't know. I, I guess I really don't know how to answer that except for uh, maybe someone who enjoys the adrenaline rush, you know, and then there's a, you have to stay, you have to stay fit all year long. You got to be running, hiking, you know, stay ready for it. So if you really enjoy that kind of lifestyle, that. Front lines, baby. Yeah. No lie. Front lines. Yeah. No weak links. No weak links for yeah. sure. Can can we hear, I, I kind of want to hear some like stories where you guys, may, maybe you and your crew were like close to. You know, they come by, um, like I was telling you, that, that one that I was talking about from the season before last, and it has to do with us not having the right people. But the fire's coming up, and normally we'll get in front of it. You know what I mean? We'll cut it off, or we'll wait to and cut an advantageous line where we can where we can burn off it or put a hose lay and get... It, it, there's a lot of different things we can do, but like a situation in Northern California, low on resources, and it was me and my crew, we were up... Um, up on a ridge line. This is the last thing that happened, last time that happened. And uh, the fire, we had a lookout in place, right? And they were supposed to let us know if it if it hit a certain point so we could get out of there before it got to us. Well, those people who were our lookout, they abandoned their job. And we didn't know. So we were waiting for a radio call. Well, the time comes up, we're supposed to start rolling off the hill. We started rolling out. That fire had did what we didn't want it to do and then cut us off. So we had to back out and it's fucking moving, right? So it's chasing us, like right? You know, and then we back out. And it's still coming up this other side too, so we're kind of cornered by it. And the thing was, was there's a shitload of, of tall trees, excuse me, um, right there. So if they, we're worried about where we were at, just waiting because of the trees. So we hit down the dozer line to get out of there as the fire was kind of just right on our edge. We got out, it was a, that was a, probably the most sketchy one. You know, I've been in a few though, where we got cut off on a, the railroad fire. That was a pretty gnarly one. And different, there's a bunch of different little situations, but for the most part, we stay ahead of that not being an issue. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like we shouldn't have to use our fire shelters. And if we're following the the tens and the eighteens that are put in place as our rules, then unless Mother Nature, which you can't control, flips up on you, then we should be in good positions most of the time. What yeah. do you think of city uh, city or, or county firefighters within this? You know, firefighters within the city that stay at the at the fire. I think houses. it's a it's a it's a respectable job. I personally wouldn't want to do it. Why? Um, it's just not my get down, the whole like military style of it. Is, yes. that, is it a military style? Yeah, you know, they're yes sir, no sir, all their badges and their cute little outfits and stuff that they have to go around in. I'm just, I'm not really, <laughs> in, I'm not really into that whole get down. Huh. You know, we're out in the mountains fucking working out and. Would you guys, would you guys, so you guys would, you, would you guys consider yourself uh, uh, kind of like a, a the, on the a wild bunch of individuals from. The guys that work in the city? Oh, yeah. It's night and day different. Night and day. Night and day. In regards to the type of individuals that are working on both sides. Yeah. A lot of people are leaving from the wild and then having to trim their beards, cut their hair, get that pretty look to go and try to get into that world because that's where the money's at. That's where the life's at. You mm. know what I mean? To go wave at people at Albertsons. Yeah, but you know what? <laughs> You're not wrong. But also what they do, though, is... I mean, those fools are with it, man. As far as saving lives, and, and I think I love them dudes. Yeah, bro. The, I think I think they're they unsung are. heroes, bro. Yeah, yeah, and I and I feel like that completely. You know what I mean? About them, they go to schooling to get their medic shit. They put a lot of they, those, those. So, so are they all medics? 
I wouldn't say all of them, but for the majority of the fire jobs, yeah, you need to be an EMT or medic. Wow. You know what I mean? So that's why, you know, they're, and it, it depends what city you're in. If you work in LA or New York, you get a busy station, you might be fighting fires all the time. But what you're going to be running is a lot of medicals, you know? I'm, I'm CPR certified, bro. There you go. So if you pass out right now, bro, I'm going to lift that little mustache of yours up, bro. I appreciate you. have to save your life, buddy. And, and likewise, I'm pretty good at the Heimlich. If something happens to you, I'll get behind you, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you <issue> pumps. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Touche. <laughs> um, what do you think about the fight? What happened in? Uh, well, obviously, we all know have the same feeling about it. But the firefighters, uh, 9/11, yeah. firefighters 9/11, bro, is that wild or what? Yeah, I it's mean, just fucking so tragic. Many, you know what I mean? So many firefighters lost their life, and they lost their life due to. Uh, what respiratory problems years later yeah all that and and also too while trying to save lives right yeah i mean you got to think about if, if you look at what that looked like on the news those guys were the the brave of the brave to run in there you know I mean? <sighs> man to run into that hats off to you yeah. motherfuckers man Seriously. r.i.p and the ones that are still around man yeah, yeah that was your 9-11 firefighters man the new biggest york thing. city and all the other counties that probably came around and Booted up, suited up, and did their thing, man. Yeah, that was, that was all bad. I see firefighters, bro, and I just fucking, like, I always, just because I got a little piece of it in fire camp. Yeah, you know what's up. I just have a respect for them, like a, a very high level of respect for what these guys do. And and I get what you're saying. It's two different animals if you're in the fucking, if, you know, if you're if you're in the trenches, like the, the woods, bro, like, that is some... That's dangerous as fuck, bro. But you're in the city too. There's just different probably levels of of danger to that. Oh yeah, that, it's a, that it's, provides yeah, too it's because shit. yeah, you got to watch out for mm. like, you know. Well, then you got to deal with people too. Pe- yeah, that's, well, that's people. what I was gonna say, bro. Yeah. Like people, I was gonna say like fucking gang members, yeah. <laughs> uh, or just you know, just the weirdos, dangerous huh? people. You yeah. know, you, you don't know who's out there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for you the know? most part, we deal with people. You know, we deal with accidents on the highway on Highway 166 is where I work. And it's one of the most dangerous highways that cross over from, like, the 101 to the 5. Yeah. And it's a little windy-ass road. So we deal with a lot of uh, car accidents there. And it's either you got really lucky or really unlucky. It's one of the two, you know what I mean? Because it's a two-lane highway. Yeah. And people are... So that's the only place we really see shit like that. Other, Other than that, we're mostly trained in our medics. Not medic, but, like, EMT stuff, first responder, all that for ourselves really too out on the line because we're out in the middle of nowhere yeah. so we have to have EMTs and all that out in the middle of nowhere with us Which, so if you're on the crew and you have your EMT that's good but we all have to be first responders and get certified and all that yeah, yeah especially I, I got double certified for the Heimlich you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> this fucking guy bro <laughs> no yeah but um, I love it man it's it, it's something that the working out aspect of it yeah, let's 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 pivot to that, bro. Okay, so like, I learned a lot. So growing up where I grew up, how we grew up, I didn't used to associate. Like when I saw the guys who grew up with everything and had a kind of life handed to me, you would think, you know, I kind of always just looked at them different, you know. But then working in the field that I work in, I ended up working with a lot of kids that grew up like that, but they just have fucking grit, and it changed my whole outlook on how I look at a lot of different type of people. You know, uh, we started grinding. In the workouts together, you train hard as fuck, and you start developing these relationships with people. And it's part of why I built my Instagram, is because those bonds that you make working out together, yeah. and what all it is, is undescribable, right? Yeah, come around here. Yeah, it's something. It yeah. is. And uh, so we started running, hiking, doing all that. So then I went in and started my social media, and it was with the same intent, really, because fire season ends, and then you're just on your own, right? And a lot of people fucking suffer from depression during that time or alone they start drinking you got suicide rates pop up in the off season so it's like you create this environment where you can stay connected with people still working out all year long that was kind of the intent right and then it blew into a lot of things with my instagram you know i started with um so my kids as they started becoming adults i realized that through my social media having that platform that i could show them grinding relentlessly every day and let's say i were to die tomorrow yeah. My kids will go back and that will instill something in them still that they can go look at it and be like, yeah, my fucking dad was relentless. Yeah, he's a beast. Yeah, chasing that shit, fucking grinding, working out every single day. And so there's that aspect of it. There's the aspect of having the camaraderie worldwide 
with working out. And I got that idea from fire. I didn't even know about social media, really. I wasn't into it. I had actually gotten off Facebook because tired of everybody's shit, yeah. right? Uh, just negative stuff all the time. But I was on a fire in uh, Monterey County with the crew that I run. So they're younger kids, right? So me and this kid, it was like 103 degrees this day. We hiked up to the hella spot. When we got up there, we had to wait. I think it was two hours before the helicopter got there. So I told him, hey, do a thousand push-ups in an hour with me. And he was like, all right, I'm down. And I had these little design workouts, right? Yeah. And uh, we did it. And then he started telling me you should put that shit on YouTube. Have people do it with you from wherever and Instagram. So that's how I started it. Right? He gave me the idea for it. I started it. And then it kind of just kept blowing up from that in different ways, you know? That's dope, bro. Yeah, but the fire definitely, um, you know, I get paid to work out. We have to stay in shape. So every day we get an hour, you know, where you got to be working out. We go for runs. We go for hikes. And then uh, the best thing that came from it was my wife. She watched, she used to watch me work out in the garage for fucking six years. She was watching me. I'd tell her, hey, come work out with me. No, I don't want to. One day she came in, got it in with me, and now she fucking hasn't stopped and won't stop. And Ooh, yeah. Shut the wife up. Yeah, seriously, it's something. And yeah. the, the, yeah, it is, you know. And the dynamic that it created in our relationship, we started creating that bond of camaraderie with each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Having that. And so now she's on there. Um, I even have, because I have coaches on my team that are part of my, my, my whole coaching plans that I have. And she's on there helping the girls with how they eat and different things we got going on. She's involved in something we do together. My kids are involved. You know, it's just, uh, it's a beautiful thing. And, and that's why I encourage like with, with the, you know, anybody working out, like get your significant other on board with you because having that support system and getting down like that is something else. I even do two for one for couples in my program because I encourage that for yeah, people, people to do it. No, hundred percent. Yeah, um, I was, good uh, stuff, bro. Good yeah, stuff. Yeah, hundred percent. Good stuff. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I got my girl a gym membership. Was she insulted? A or couple months ago. Nah, nah. Because I, I, you know, you know, bro. Hey, check it out, bro. You know, if you're gonna be insulted because if someone you do gets you a gym membership, then shit. You already, you already knowing that you need to step your shit up. You know what <laughs> I mean? Straight up. You know. Yeah. Um, but. I just, it, fuck, fuck how it's going to make you look. Yeah. Let's think about how it's going to make you feel inside these, between these two things That's right here. Thing right there. Yeah. It's going to make you feel fucking amazing. Say if you had like a stressful day, you know, fucking shitty ass job or just a bad day at work, which we all go through. Man, you can go hit a workout and, you know, it can relieve a lot of that stress. It may not take the. <laughs> take it's, it's take the situation all. away, but yeah, it's not a fix all. Yeah. But you're actually doing something. You're creating different, giving yourself an outlet. Well, yeah, the release. oxygen and blood yeah. movement in your body is actually a different. It's going to affect your mindset. There's actual things with it. Like my wife, she battles depression real a lot. You know, we had something happen with one of the kids, and it fucked her up pretty bad. Okay, and um, sorry to hear that. No, I don't think they're good now. Okay, but uh, it was a thing, and now uh, and it it did mess her up, and uh, working out. She, because before before she was working out, she was just in that, stuck in that, and now she's gotten off the the med she was taking, and she's just fucking relentless. I swear to God, she go out running all the time, and whenever she's feeling like that, she'll just go get, she'll go do fucking burpees, she she'll go do jumping jacks, and it's like it's like I'm saying, it's not a fix all. It's not gonna say you're not gonna go run on the treadmill, and all of a sudden you're not sad anymore. You know what I mean? But it's over time. Look at every single move you make, you're teaching yourself something about who you are. And if you continuously demand more of yourself, it's going to affect everything about you. You know what I mean? Over time, consistently. So you're teaching yourself that. You know, you can teach yourself that you're going to sit there and wallow in the same shit and cuddle up and eat. And, and just because you know already how you can get through that. It's comfort. It's habits. And you can actually make those changes. You know what I mean? But you have to, you have to do it. Absolutely, bro. It does take work, you know? Wise words right there, baby. Wise words right there. And so, you guys want to you want to open the phone line? Should we open the yeah, phone line? Yeah, let's do it. Let's open the phone line. Yeah, real quick though. I want to like this is real quick. No, take your time, bro. My Instagram. You notice it's in black and white, right? Yeah. Why yeah. is that? Because it, just to keep it simple, it, it's like a just the simplicity of what it can be. You know, everybody gets overwhelmed with working out. They get overwhelmed with all the the theatrics and. Um, you know, the big equipment and all that. So most 90% of the time, I'm just showing you a pair of dumbbells in my garage, getting it in. 
you know, just the simplicity of it. And uh, that, that ended up catching on to a lot of people, you know, because like, if you are somebody who doesn't want a gym membership right now and you buy a pair of dumbbells, I could design you a whole plan, you know, just in your garage that would be equivalent to a gym. Absolutely. Yeah. But anyway, it's just the simplicity. I like, I like the, uh, so during, during COVID, it was hard to buy weights. Man, the weights were expensive. They were like dope, huh? Yeah. Weights to buy weights, like use weights, any yeah. weights. Man, it's crazy because, you know, the gyms were closed and shit. They're expensive as shit still, yeah. But I was, I, bu I was buying those, uh, what do you call those fucking, uh, those uh, kettlebells. Oh, yeah, kettlebells. Yeah, I have, a, I have a bunch of kettlebells now. And I, I got into the kettlebell workouts, bro. There you go. Those are good. Yeah, the kettlebell workouts. And, the, you know, so my, my at the time, my, my core was getting really strong. And, uh, I mean, the core is, you got to keep the core strong. Let's see the six-pack. Most pack. important thing. Right, right, right. Show us the six-pack. Yeah, you got to. You got to. Uh, Show us the six-pack. If not, you're full of shit, Lucky. Fire. <laughs> yeah. I've never had a six-pack, bro. Never had a six-pack in my life. That's um, all eating. Huh? That's all eating. You're not going to do uh, sit-ups. You're not going to just do enough sit-ups and crunches and all of a sudden have a six-pack. And I have a funny stomach, bro. I have like you a You can fucking, have the muscles, but the I have fat like a, there. I have like a, uh, a pop-out stomach. Okay. Like, you Let know what I'm saying? Let's see how your stomach looks. <laughs> so, does anybody got an iron? <laughs> anybody need some fucking clothes iron, homie? Show me, dog. I think, I see what it looks I like. I think you might get <laughs> I think you might be getting that massage you were thinking about earlier. He's trying to wear me out, Rick. Where you at, dog? <laughs> oh, Show me the stomach, love. Where you at, dog? <laughs> My boy. Show me the stomach. Here we go. Let me put this in real quick. <laughs> Fuck it, Rick. That shit's, That's right. that shit's hilarious, bro. No, right. <laughs> Yeah, I told you. I, I told you I'd build we your program. <laughs> I told you I'd build your program for free. Yeah, I'm down to do it. Yeah, you and your lady. Man, I don't <laughs> mean, my la you know what, bro? Check it out, dog. You know, so I have a discipline from uh from probably prison, bro, that I learned to uh, to be disciplined. Like it doesn't matter if I'm fucking on drugs. Like you can ask my homies. When I was tweaked out, I'd be doing push ups and I'd be doing dips and shit like that. Um, but Lux so I, I getting it. I, no I, lie, I, Lux I, getting it. I can tell you, a hundred percent. Hey, Lux always look good, no matter if he was tweaked out. Nah, what the fuck lie. he was He's doing? He's too nice, bro. That's my homie. No, nah, hey, right. no bullshit. Motherfucker always look good. Like he always had a little size, no matter what. He could he could lie. And he could say whatever. Lux always look good, dog. That's like, right. No I, matter. I like when I be smoked out, dog, because, you know what I mean? My dick would look huge, bro. <laughs> oh, little but, guy. I'd be all dick, <laughs> homie. You know what I mean? Uh, you know what I've gotten? Uh, I've gotten smoked out in my life, and it's just I look like a fucking, just ridiculous, homie. Uh, like 170 pounds. Looks like your head might shrink, bro. Actually, I think that might be the problem. Is my head is fucking big and my body's all small. And shit, you know? Let's get this phone call right here. You guys are talking too much shit, dog. You're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. Luck Sun Tzu. Yes, sir. -y. Whoa. How you doing, buddy? Good, buddy. How about yourself? All right, it's Trips, man. We saw we must. Oh, trips, trips, my boy. Trips, Maybe sir. Remember. What up, Trips? Yes, sir. Tapping in, man. I see you got a, a fireman right there. Yeah, trips. Good to hear from you, bro. Last time I heard, bro, you know what I mean? It was just a, it was a bad day on the motherfucking job, bro. You're yeah, all well, you know what happens, man. Little, a little speed bump here and there, man. You know what I mean? But hey, you got to keep pushing, right? Brother, I am very happy to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, man. very love, happy, man. brother. Much love, respect, man. I got a package for you, big boy, big dog. Hell yeah. I got a package for you, dog. I want to say Christmas package, dog, but I'm very happy that you, you're on the phone right now, dog. Trips, you know what's all yeah. loves, baby. Man, I heard, yeah. when, I was, you know. when I heard, Whoa. hey, when I heard, bro, I was like, fuck no, dog. You fucking kidding me, dog? And and you've been in the yeah. back of been in the back of my mind, and I'm glad, brother, that you you back yeah. on the right side, right? Yeah. Fence, baby. Yeah. That's well, right. you know, I mean, what, what, not that you were ever on the wrong call, side man, of the fence, but you know what I mean. Chop it up. And, yeah. You know what I mean. Absolutely. All right. Uh, I'll give you a little insight on uh, what's going on, but uh, in the meantime, it's green time, man. Yes, sir. And uh, you know, I see you got the the fireman right there, man, with the caterpillar on his lip. That's right. Um, <laughs> 
years you know, of growth. Uh, y- yes. Years yeah, of I need a little up. bit of help. I need a little bit of help with some work, man. So, you know what I mean? Maybe maybe he can uh, uh, assist me on that. You yeah, want to fire you know some fires I mean? trips? Yeah, I want to go out there and, you know what I mean? I want to spray my hose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, homie, the way to do it is to go around to the Forest Service stations and ask them yeah. how to get on a Type 2 crew. That's how you get your foot in the door. And age doesn't matter. Okay. Experience doesn't matter. Um, you know, that's how you get in. You go. There's tons of them around here, especially in LA County. Um, you okay. go, yeah, you go find out how to get on a Type Two crew, and then yeah. from there you do. You know, you do your season. It's dirty work, you know. But then you you got the experience on your application. They'll show you how to apply, help you out with the resume. That's the way to go, right there. You know yeah, I mean? sounds good, man. Appreciate what you're doing, man. Appreciate, appreciate the, you. the information. Appreciate the help. Uh, much love, man. Much love and support. Love, Sun Tzu, man. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Keep pushing. Hey, I'm I'm I'm, 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 I'm forwarding I'm forwarding Rick uh, a hookup right now for jobs. She's a chick, bro. Friend of mine works at an agency. I hope she still works there. But I used to hook up all the homies okay. with jobs, bro. But uh, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, mean hopefully he, Rick, love, Rick, Rick. Yeah, you know I'm gonna get it. I'm yeah. gonna get it to you right now. Bro. Yeah, but we go we go we go, we go. Okay. bro. Like check it out, dog. You know what I mean? We've been here for five years doing this, bro, and we have a lot of support yes, within sir. the community. And if we can't get you a job, then fuck, dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. We ain't right. shit. So we gonna we I'm gonna I'm gonna. Rick, let's let's uh, put a little Hit focus me up, on that. Trips, you already know. Hit yeah. me up, dog. Put I got me, you. Hey, put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. <laughs> That's right. You know what I'm saying? All right, trips, bro. Hey, you much know love, you man. The boy. Love you guys, man. All right, love you too, my G. Up, Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, sir. Real quick, I almost forgot to give you these. Oh yeah, let's let's hold on. You're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. We'll get it right hey, now. Hey yo, what's up, Lux? What up, doggy? Hey hey, uh, shout out to your guest right there, Wildlife Fitness. Let's go. I appreciate yeah. you, man. Let's go. Whoa. Hey, hey. Shout out, Pete. All right, brother. That's yeah, right. that's love, bro. That's love. So what do we got? We got co- oh, uh, yeah. That's our coffee. This is coffee, bro. 805 Smooth Brew. That's just what I had at the pad. I didn't have time to order it when we set it up. So that's just something for you to try right there. Okay. Yeah, because it Delicious. looks like it's been opened. and That was mine, yeah. I gave it to you. But this it, one bro? is what's brand new. I brought oh, you my pro- <laughs> our protein. Whoa. Oh, damn. You got protein? Too? Yeah. yeah. Dang, so this stuff right here. Big love. So we have our supplement line, coffee line. And uh, and then the coaching, obviously, what we have. Good stuff, but, bro. But this stuff right here, mix it with half an orange Gatorade or half a blue Gatorade, fucking orange sickle. That's <laughs> you, Lux. It, it tastes like a cream get sickle. It, baby. That's just bomb. Yeah, it's bomb. And Lux, it's good. It's got amino acids. It. It's got all the good stuff. Nothing in it, makes know? me happier than an orange sickle. You know what I mean? That's one of my favorite. Uh, Whoa. Little, uh, it's fucking good. No matter what you think, those are the best popsicles in the world. You know? Is it? it? It is. They're fucking good. Yeah, that's why I use it as an example. That's just bomb. But so, yeah, it's good. It's got all good stuff in it. So go to my website if you want to know the ingredients. So how'd you get into this? Is such this, this is so this is really badass. Here, put it right in my camera real quick, Doug. There you go, guys. Oh, how, so how can us. they order this? Let's get us. So you go to wildfitlife805.com. You see my one-on-one coaching right there. You see my Wild Fit Life Fuel site, Wild Fit Life Coffee site, and then I also do something where I help people out who are truly in a situation where they don't have money to do uh, to join programs. Where I have a, a crew program that's only ten dollars a month. And that's at the bottom of my website. If you want to join that, I give you workouts every week. You get access to my zooms. You get uh, I put you in other groups. It's good shit anyway. If you're interested, check it out. That's for people who really don't have it. You know what I mean? Good stuff, that's my dope. boy. That's dope. How, and, how, and how is business going? How is how is business? Well, it could be it's, better. It's building. Okay. Um, to be honest with you, I got some shit going on right now. With uh, I was gonna bring it up with the fire. You know, um, I had a fucking crackhead looking couple try to take basically everything that I got. You know what I mean? They brought up some bullshit like that. Not uh, good, dog. Yeah. What, your house? To, everything. I almost lost everything. I'm just getting out of it right now. It's been going on for a year and three months. So you've had a, like a somewhat of an open case or something? Something like that. Fighting the case? Yeah, they uh, they tried to come at me and like consider me a threat, put threat charge on me and uh, just weird shit. And it's not true. It's yeah. not, Are you good, though? I'm good You're now. getting it in? I'm good now. That's right. Yeah, and so we're going to come out, but I almost lost my house. We almost lost, uh, you know, a lot of shit was going on to be able to keep things afloat. Glad you're yeah, here, It's good, though, though. Now, we're, now we're coming I'm out glad of glad you're here, my boy. Yeah, Getting it that. in, dog. Yeah, so. Uh, For real. Yeah, you know what I mean? So that, 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 was, that was tough, but business is, to be honest with you, Wild Fit Life is what kept me afloat. 
Wow. During these hard times, put it out there, though. Yeah, Shout yeah, it yeah, out yeah. right now, it so is. we can keep you out there. Yeah, so it's a Wild Fit Life 805. You know what I mean? We have uh, the, the the one-on-one coaching, so we offer uh, one-on-one coaching. I have multiple coaches on my team, nutritionalists, all that. We build you a custom uh, workout plan, a uh, custom meal plan. We got groups to teach you how to eat. So this is the thing too with working out. Everybody that you see makes it seem like you have to go all in. You know? Yeah. Um, like no more fucking this and that and count your macro. I mean, so we can do all that. But if you're somebody who's drinking right now, someone who's caught up in your lifestyle and is having a hard time and keep You know we are, dog. You know, we didn't keep we, we and, caught up in our lifestyle. Yeah, and you dog. keep and you keep putting it off like, oh, I have to stop drinking first. I got I gotta do this first. Yeah. I got you gotta fucking lose that. You're never gonna do it. You, you gotta just lose that. And who cares? Um, yeah, know, that's right. The homie, dog. the homie Tripper. He's on uh, Instagram and on TikTok. Uh, he he said that when I said this to him, that's why I'm gonna repeat it. That it helped him and actually got him to where he's at. Is just start. You know, it, fuck it. Go have some. If, if you're drinking, don't worry about stopping drinking. Don't worry about stopping smoking. Don't worry about changing. Just start working out. I'm telling you, if you start just, somewhere, if right? you start, even just go start walking around the block. Yeah. You now you did something. Okay? Mm-hmm. Small steps. Keep doing it every fucking day. And the momentum will come and then the drinking won't make sense. I'm not sober, but I just don't party and I don't drink because I'm going to get up tomorrow morning and fucking work out. Get us Wait, so on my boy. You're, you're not sober, but you don't drink and you don't party. You confuse me. I'll right have there. a drink. Oh, if, so if you do drink once a while. If it's a special occasion, yeah. I'm not so like I'm not sober. I'm not in recovery. I'm not like if it's a special occasion, we went to Vegas. I had like, to, we're going to do us what we need to do, yeah. but we're going to make sure we get ourselves yeah, so right. It, it just start, you know what I mean? And then yeah. once you start making that lifestyle, all the other shit that's in the way will slowly fall off. Mm. And then, Of course. Like, right now, it doesn't make sense for me to drink a shitload because I want to get up in the morning. I got some plans. You, know you what got mean? shit yeah. to do, bro. Yeah. So do it, it just goes, yeah. it goes like that. But anyway, so we offer that. Um and then uh, the supplements and all that stuff, and then the ten dollar program. You know what I mean? If you guys don't have money to get involved in a one on one program, with that being said, if you do want to do the one on one, tell me you saw me on this uh, podcast, and I'll give you thirty three percent off the one on one. So you got plans for all of us. <laughs> out there, you got plans for all of us. Yeah. And so the thing is, real big with my get down is that if you don't have anything and you just want to buy a pair of dumbbells and get yeah. started at your own house, I'll build you an entire workout structured around dumbbells and body weight <laughs> that you could get it in just like you're at the gym structured that's dope. around you that's yeah. dope that's cool yeah so a lot good of stuff, stuff to it bro. you know what i mean that's good stuff it's because good. a lot of us you know we out here we're trying to do right and we're trying to make the best of what we got so if you can help us do better that's it us, that's the start you know that's great dog. that's right you yeah, know what I mean? absolutely. And we appreciate dog. you, dog. Likewise, yeah. You know what I mean, you yeah. talk about getting 100%. more. And, and, well, you know, bro, the fools kept on. I, I was seeing on on the corner of my eye, bro, and it, it low key. You know what I mean? I'm just like, what the fuck, dog? But you guys are fucking. I seen fools talking shit, talking about look like I'm losing. Uh, I gained a gang of weight, bro. I, I thought I, I lost some weight a little bit, dog. Lucky, lucky, my boy. Bro, <laughs> were, were fools talking shit on there, bro? Or what? Uh, it's probably just trying to get your attention. Us, you know what I mean? Dog. It worked, dog. It worked. You know how they do us, yeah. dog. No, no, no. Someone said that. Pro- Protein's actually stash milk. <laughs> hey, fuck it. it is what it is. You know what I mean? Hell oh, yeah, stash dude. milk. Hey, <laughs> or you can or stuff, stash stash fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> or you could go oh, get yeah. on the fucking uh, the roids like everybody else and fucking start growing mustaches on your back. And shit. <laughs> That's it's crazy. What we're looking for dog. Some of these fools are looking for that shit, dog. Yeah, and there's places to get that. Yeah, but yeah. what's what good you- is that you're you're here helping us get to where we need to be, dog. And that's where we need to be, dog. That's get right. In, get in on the program. That's right. You know, and with that being said, my Instagram, if you pay attention to the music that I play, it's to associate us to like the way we, what we used to party with, you know what I mean? Growing yeah. up in the nineties and stuff like that. So now you're associating it to grinding and taking care of yourself in the yeah. garage. Uh, yeah, nice. you got little that's one. That's, yeah. yeah, little one did that track for you too. That shit yeah. hard, fool. That is a hard one. Fuck the little one, dog. That boy yeah. got too much talent, dog. Yeah, he does. Shout yeah. out to the homies, yeah. dog. Yeah, little one, yeah, little one gets down. He 100%. does. You already know. Uh, Droops low key got a crush on Lucky. <laughs> 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 hey, bro, we've been we've been we've been, yeah. we been lovers for a long time. Stop it. Where are you? Bro, somebody's gonna clip this right now, bro. Back up! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> 
Like <laughs> the fuck up, bro. <laughs> you gotta stop, you know. That's right. Hey, um, fucking Rick. Love you, <laughs> love you too, dog. Let's get this phone call yeah, right let's here. Let's go. You're on Hood Stocks. Talk to us. Hey, fools, is, is it for you gain weight to take dick? Wait, wait, say that again, bro. I said, is it true that you gain weight so you could take more dick? <laughs> oh, shit. You stand on the scale with it in you. You caught him, dog. <laughs> Fucking Lucky's cut, bro. <laughs> That's it. We're canceling the show, dog. When, you he got say, us. when he say, did I gain weight so I can take more dick? Yeah, oh, I, yeah. thought, I didn't know yeah, what, I thought what he said. said. Yeah, he said, dude. He caught us, dog. Oh, I thought he they said know. something else. <laughs> we can't get you a job, then fuck, dog. You know what I mean? That's we ain't right. shit, Lucky so we're going to... Rick, let's, let's uh, put a little focus on that. You already know. Hit me up, dog. Hey. Hey, Lucky's getting Hey, Fuck. fucking, uh, uh fucking Rick, Rick's Rick. off the hook right now. Let's get this next phone call. My boy. Uh, fucking, uh, see what them Smirnoffs are doing to you, bro? What? I'm drinking <laughs> Coca-Cola. What are you talking about? Like, You're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. You're live, baby. Yo. Yo, yo, yo. All right. Whoa. Yeah. This has been, hey, this has been fucking. You see uh, what we do, dog? We showing love, dog. Yes, Humility, always. Dog. That's, That's right. what we do right here, baby. We show love and shit, Whoa, dog. Whoa, goonies. Yeah. I'm looking forward to fucking mixing this with a fucking, with an orange. Orange uh, or blue Gatorade. Uh, but orange. Just do half the Gatorade, though, because it got a lot of sugar. It has a lot of Gatorade, has a lot of sugar. Where did yeah. you get the Gatorade? Uh, Zero sugar. Get the regular one. Get the regular one. Get the regular one. Get the regular one. Yeah, don't play with it. Don't fuck around. Yeah, just I mean, yeah, drink a lot of water, fucking work out. I mean. So when is the best time to take this? I normally take mine at night, but it is very easy, you know. So oh, at night before you go to sleep. That's what I do. Mm. Yeah, and then, and then I also a lot of times I'll have one when I first eat. So I'll have oatmeal, and then my protein shake, and then eggs, and then I'll have a protein shake again at night. Uh. Does that shit make you a little gassy? No, no, no. It's good. It's clean too. It's real, uh, real fine. It's good shit. You'll like it. Huh? It's a big business, huh? This, this. It is a big business. Um, Strength card. Cartel's doing that. A lot of, a lot yeah, of, a lot so of fellas the, are doing that. You know, the thing with Strength Cartel is um, I love Strength Cartel. Yeah. I joined up with them um, a year and a half ago or something like that. And uh, I still promote their supplements even though I have you know my own. Yeah. There's some things I didn't come out with so I could just promote theirs because they showed me love from the beginning. Called me over with the, I, uh, I love their get down and I've been watching them since I started. So I'd love to be a part of that. Like I, their creatine, for example, I didn't come out with my own creatine. Cause I just want to promote theirs. You know? that's, that's dope. Yeah, and um, is it a hard business to crack into? Yeah, like, I'm having, I, I haven't sold much to be honest with you. You know what I mean? It's still new. I don't. What does this cost somebody right here? Like forty two bucks. Forty two bucks. Yeah. Okay. Um, hey, but I'm not that good. At, I'm not a market. Yeah, I got to get better at marketing. I'm just so simple, homie. I just get in there and I fucking do my workout. I'm like, hey, this shit's good. Grab it. So, well, so let me ask you this then, bro. Um, what, what, why was why should somebody buy this opposed to the one at uh, say Costco? Well, it's got better ingredients, but just to support me instead of fucking Costco. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you know, a lot yeah. of them are a lot of them are not that much different. You can look at different ingredients. This one has amino aminos in it too. This is a good protein, but you know, you can get whatever you want at Costco. You can they have different ones that are vegan. I have vegan ones too. So there's different things. But really, when it comes to supplements, for the most part, what you're doing is you're supporting a brand. You know what I mean? More so than you are like, oh, 100%. You know, people get on there and they sell you all this bullshit about this one will fucking make your dick And they're bigger. basically all the same is what you're saying. In a lot of ways, not completely the same. There is there a manufacturer that's making all of these a lot and of just them, putting yeah. different, this lot. different brands on it and it's yes. basically the same shit. So yes and no. Okay. So yes is the answer. I use a, I use one of those distributors, Yeah. but I'm working on a, um, when you pay more, you can make your own custom blends, which I'm doing right now with the PM blend. Like I have ingredients that I know I want to put in it, yeah. And so you can, um, you know, you get you get in with the business, and then you can start making your own custom blends, which a lot of people do. Okay, mm. and maybe dudes Try like it. Strength Cartel is doing. I really don't know. Yeah, for uh, what sure. Level, yeah, yeah, I'm, I get it. You what don't. Level, well, I don't. I really don't know what level they're at with it. I know that like, uh, you know, somebody like Kevin Hart, for example, who comes out with the protein. I'm sure he's got the the ends to customize an ingredient. You know what I mean? To the exact. What do you, yeah. Like he can really get in the lab and do some taste tests. Then Everything and costs. 
Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, the, so, the more money you got, the more you can put into yeah, it. Yeah, so like I put together a PM blend that I know exactly what I what I want to put in it. It's got Valerian root, all these things. But I'm working on coming out with that. It just takes a little bit of time. So forty two dollars, forty two dollars. Uh, you priced this at, and I know some of these uh, can range a lot more pricier than forty two dollars. I mean, I, I would say that sounds uh, semi reasonable. I even keep though everything cheap. Even though I'm not, I'm not uh, someone that buys this on a regular basis at all. But uh, in support of you, I'm gonna try it, Appreciate and it. and if it works for me, then I'm gonna you know I'll, I'll purchase more from you, brother. That's right. Um, but what is the benefits of taking this protein right here? So the only things that I supplement every single day are protein, multivitamins, and creatine. So supplementing protein, protein is the most important important thing that you could take and put in your body for muscle development, and then there's all kinds of other health factors that go in with protein. You know, like in my, in my program, we put out things where we tell you exactly what protein does to your body, how it breaks down, all these different things that protein does. But that's why you go on a high protein diet because you you build lean muscle, you burn fat. Protein's what does that. Protein's the, the best thing that you can take. And the only other thing you really need to supplement is multivitamins, which I sell too for pretty cheap. And then the creatine's good. You know, but everything else is extra. You know, like the pre-workouts, people misuse that. She shouldn't be taking that every day. You know what I mean? Well, it could be bad for your car, cardiovascular health. Well, it, yeah, it's uh, it's bad for your heart over time if you're misusing that, that it. That would be cardiovascular, Yeah, right? cardiovascular, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then you start um, you start getting used to it anyway. And people just start using it like coffee, and they're not getting the mm-hmm. actual like benefits from what it actually does, which is supposed to create a perpetuant pump, which you know makes your muscles work better and harder, forces more blood to them, stuff like that. So you think, you think in one's diet, our you know everyday diet they should be taking some type of uh of whey protein yes um because it is essential for just uh performance growth everything, everything. i mean when i think of uh, protein i'm thinking of maybe something that i'm going to get from a carne asada burrito the yeah, beef or or or, or 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 you know what i mean i'm going to have myself a, a a chicken breast right yeah um and some rice and some vegetables and and so to the average person maybe to, not to the average person but maybe the people that don't know the ins and outs of these supplements they're thinking well you know what? that's enough protein for me right there but you're mm-hmm. kind of saying that it's not it's not no, usually, right, is if I'm right, he's like you need uh, um, the same amount of protein as your body weight. Pretty much, usually. that's a good way, a good thing to go offer each gram. Yeah. yeah, and you're not getting that. Yeah, you know so I mean? so proteins help you at least get like sixty off the bat if you do two scoops or yeah. three scoops. And then so I'm like, eating, high, I'm eating chicken, I'm eating fish, I'm eating other yeah. things that are giving me high sources of protein. Beans. Yeah, you know, different, I know different like, sources. I know, like I think like one whole chicken is almost like a hundred grams of protein, but like. Who, Imagine having to sit and eat a whole chicken or doing a co- half chicken and then a protein shake. To exactly. Least. That's a great way to break it down. That's why I say you should supplement protein and multivitamins. Yeah, Those right. are the things that you're missing out on. Everything else is extra. Yeah. Everything is, is extra, especially like... Uh, Say like fish oil, vitamins. Uh, is that... Oh, you need that. You need those the, omegas. The, 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 yeah, the vitamins are... What the multivitamins are, you know, I mean, you need that. I think it's good to supplement that because you're not going to be getting all that shit unless you're strictly on a diet that's going to be getting you those things. And let's get some phone calls, bro. These things are blowing up big time, dog. Hold on, let's. Uh, you're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. Hey, so your vitamins will they make my dick bigger? That's the, that's the way it works. <laughs> you know what I mean, so go on the website How right now. Is- yeah, go grab some. How much are your 12 ounce bags of coffee? You're about to be a big dog right now. <laughs> For real. You yes. about to pull up to be a big dog. The 12 ounce is like 15. You yeah. have to go on the website and look at what it is. See that? So is this, is this, hey, thanks for calling, bro. Yeah, I appreciate Bye. you, man. You're um, going to be a big dog. <laughs> You know what you're going to get for Christmas? The only <laughs> way... Oh, let me get this call. This is an 805 number that's been calling. Hold on a second. Uh, you're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. What's up? Hello. Hi. You're on Hoodstocks. This, this is Justin's wife. Oh, what's oh, up, man? Oh, wifey. Uh, wifey. That's right. How you doing, wifey? Hello. Is it, how you Hello. doing, love? Hello. Turn the volume down in the back. Yeah, you got to turn the volume down in the back. You got to turn the volume down in the background. She's Hello. listening to herself on the TV. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And it's speaking through the, the phone. Yeah. It's not going to work. Fucking up, love. There's a delay. Can you hear us? 
Yeah, I can hear. Uh, thank you we, for calling. We all want you to take off your shirt. Oh! oh. Don't get too oh. excited. Let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Take oh, it off. Shit. Oh. <laughs> there he goes. You know what? Take off the jacket. You want to see me naked? Can, going can you hear me? Right. Yeah, we can hear you. So you're on. He's taking his shirt off right yeah. now. Oh. This is a, I, can, I can hear you guys. This is a first right here. Take I'm not gonna do, I'm, this, what about the shirt? Damn. There you go. Take yeah, the little, shirt little, off, little, little, little. Where I'm going with that is, if you want to see me with my shirt off, go follow me on Instagram, because every single post, I'm like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you We're go. about to follow you on Instagram check, now, this, dog. This, this, Joops is about to follow you to your car, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm, try, I'm trying to get some kisses on me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to follow you home, dog. <laughs> you better fill that tank up, bro. You <laughs> driving like two hours. Gotta go to eight five. You're gonna be looking in the rearview mirror. You'll be like, "Yep, you just ran out of gas." Hey, you can <laughs> borrow the homie's Tesla. No, just charge I like it up. To take like, your fucking shirt off. Right oh, out of the gas. No, I, need, I need him to go on uh, on Instagram to see that love. Yeah, and you're gonna make it very <laughs> awkward because our audience is ninety eight percent. Men, heterosexuals. Whoa. Cause there's a, probably a big percentage in the closet still. You know, but, uh, <laughs> Shout out. But that can pull them out the closet, so we don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we were just talking about man, manly stuff, whey, protein, working yeah, out. Yeah, now we got dropped into my wife trying to get me to strip on fucking hood stocks. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that would be, bro. I don't think Thank that'd be a, you guys. a Thank good you. Thank you. Good time. Yeah, that, that wouldn't probably be a good uh, look on your, uh, uh, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, good times. Yeah, good times, hundred um, percent. So, the, okay, that's interesting, then, bro. I, I learned something, and I always like to. I I learn something from all the guests that we have on here. Man. Sometimes I'll learn something what to do and something not to do, and you know, you're forever a, learning. Yeah, and there's a lot to it. You know what I mean? But that's why I only came out with protein, multivitamins, and then like two other little things because the good those stuff. are the essentials. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the essential. And you can get that's all the other stuff, need. but like when you first start working out, people go drop all kinds of money on fucking supplements. Yeah. And you yeah. don't need to. You know what I mean? You don't need to jump into taking creatine. You don't need to be taking pre-workout every day. Just fucking go walk around the block, start eating good, and then get yourself some protein, get yourself some multivitamins, you know? Yeah, but that's the sure, thing. Everybody bro. gets their little fucking workout package together at the beginning of the year, and they buy all this fucking big old box of supplements that you never use. We gotta use get us in, in there. there, bro. We gotta know what we need. Man, Lucky, you should use that and get buff, and then we'll have a collab. Dude, Wild Fit Life, Hoodstock's fucking protein powder. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fucking that would be sick. Get us buff, dog. Well, we, we'll come. do something even better than that, bro, and we're just Bring gonna Cleon fucking promote. We'll Cleon just, got it. We'll promote his, bro, because this is the business he is in. This is the lane that he's in, and we want him to get all the money in this because this is what he does, you know? Appreciate you. And so the website for this is where everything if you go to wildfitlife805.com all my different sites are there i try to make it simple wildfitlife805.com you can get the wild fit life fuel wild fit life coffee and then you can see how to apply for my programs right there too tell me about this oh. coffee right here bro because i am a fucking big time okay coffee so trip drinker. out on the coffee, coffee. What? yeah so what trip is... out on the coffee so this guy who followed me on instagram um he hit me up and he was like hey you want to start your own coffee brand and I'm like, ah, I don't know, man. I'm pretty fucking picky about coffee. You know, um, a, lot of it, coffee? a lot of it gives me heartburn. Mm. So I know already what coffee I could drink and I'm good with it. But I told him, well, overnight it's a box, right? My wife's even more picky than me. Yeah. So he overnight us a box of um, all the different blends that he already fucks with. Yeah. Every single one was just absolutely the best coffee I've ever had in my life. Shut mm. up. Yeah, especially the one I named 805 Smooth Blue. What are we dealing with? What kind of coffee are we dealing with? What beans are they? Oh, so that, that's the thing. There's Colombian. There's um, oh, it's a blend. Yeah, there's French. There's different blends. You know what I mean? He yeah. has his family's been roasting. He's from the Bay Area. Yeah, and he comes from a family of people who've been roasting for decades. Wow. Okay. So this guy's got his shit down. I lucked out by hooking up with him. Wow. And so um, yeah, he was like, you know, come up with some of your own little blends. Throw your name on them. And we'll sell them. So Hi. what's the best blend that you're... 805 um, Smooth Brew. The 805 Smooth Brew. I fucking drink it every day and black. I don't drink it with any extra shit. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Co coffee is... Uh, is a How do you say it, bro? Um, it's a universal language yeah. across the world, bro. Like Love everybody, coffee, bro. everybody Love drinks coffee. coffee. Every morning, dog, when Who? I get up. What is... Um, yeah, what is the strongest, best coffee? There was an Armenian. There was an, I used to work with this Armenian dude. Mm. Um, 
and uh, he used to bring the boss coffee. And I try to befriend him so I can get some of that coffee too because he would bring the boss this Armenian coffee that he would make and the boss would be just fucking zooming. It was our foreman, right? He'd yeah. be fucking flying. I'm just like, fuck, I gotta, I wanna, I wanna be friends with this guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I need to try that. Yeah, I, I really Let's wanted to try on. it. Yeah, yeah. Really, and I try yeah. to be nice to this. He was an older Armenian man and he ain't, he wasn't fucking with me, bro. So I never got any of the coffee. But since then, I was just really like, I mean, I, I'm a connoisseur of coffee. That's the bro. thing, it's for coffee connoisseurs. It, a lot of people hit me up and they just want their, um, they ask me, do you sell pods? You know, or yeah. a lot of people want pods. I don't have pods. And he doesn't want to, my partner with it, he doesn't want to put it in pods because then he's not guaranteeing the freshness of what it is. Yeah. So uh, every, uh, yeah, every order is freshly roasted, the beans to oh, order. Nice. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Yeah, he'll do it. And then, um, and you can get it in, you can get it ground, you can get it whole bean, however you want, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's legit, but it's for people who actually like coffee. And you could tell those people too that they actually have recyclable pods where you just put the, I, I, I've put been the trying grounds to, in. Yeah, and I've then been trying to put that coffee, out there. coffee, bro. Yeah. We drink coffee every morning. Yeah, everybody does, like you're saying. It's yeah. universal, yeah, but it's like hard to push too. Bro. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Is it, but it's fucking good. Once you get it, you stick with it. Lucky That's tomorrow, dude. You're about to be on it. That's good, Dan. Well, I don't have a... I'm going to pass this to you guys because I have instant... I, I, I have instant coffee because I don't no longer have a, have a pot. What do you see? So you have like the... Where you put it in the pot to boil it? Oh, I can do it like that, right? I can just boil it and then filter it or oh, something? Oh, yeah. You could do that. Is that what you're saying? Is, yeah. that, is that one ground or is that whole bean? This is ground. Oh, yeah. This you're... is ground. So it just go, it goes into like a Mr. Coffee, so, right? Yeah, you could do it like a cowboy coffee and then see how it is. But you know, nobody has a pot. Well, we got a pot. We got sure. a pot, yeah. No. I do. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's just. Uh, I got a pot for sure. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Because you can just boil it. I, th I, I was thinking. I coffee every no. morning, bro. I every morning when I go to work, dog, I need some coffee, dog. No lie. You need some I right need now? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not right now because I'm not on the way to work, bro. But I know sometimes you got to watch when you drink the coffee because if it's that fire ass uh, coffee, bro, that shit will have yeah. you fucking. Fuck I'm up. telling you. No, yeah, that shit will have you that fucking. Good coffee that, break the fuck up. that shit will have you perked up. You'll be just bro. like this fucking yeah. chicken it'll like be that. It'll be awake like, like an owl. You'll trip out you on know? how good it actually tastes, though. Yeah. yeah well, that's I'm what's gonna... hard. To, it's hard for me. Like, I, like, I'm not a marketing type guy. I got to get better. Yeah, I do. Because well, that's well, sell me this coffee right now. Sell me this coffee. Yeah, I think better. I just did. You know what I mean? You just did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah you did. You yeah. did sell it to us. But though. it's coffee. hard for me to get yeah. on there because when I make my videos, I, I I'm really I'm just such a simple person. Like fuck, this is good. Grab it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I mean, it's, need you I mean, this it simplicity so, is still like it's. Like just well, you, you saying that it's, it's roasted to order is it like insane? You can't get that anywhere. Roasted to order. Yeah, like yeah. It's yeah. roasted. Like you yeah. order it right now. Cocoa beans, right? Roasted cocoa beans. No, no, no. Coffee beans. Coffee beans. Coffee beans. They roast them. Yeah. 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 I, I put a sick ass video out of him roasting it. it looks yeah. pretty badass too. The way he drops the beans in and it spins it. Sick. Yeah. yeah. There's a real art to that, especially if it's it's been passed down from generation that's to generation. That's what I'm saying. This guy right? knows what he's doing. Yeah, trial. Yeah, that's I mean, so that, that's trial that's trial that's error. Error. I mean, you have it all right there. It's it's local. It's been for de yeah. well, they've been doing it for decades, yeah. and it's like basically roasted to order. It's yeah. that simple. Those are the three pillars. I mean, it is, and it doesn't I, and have I to make it more make, complicated. And I try to make little content, you know what I mean? But uh, I I think that the the Starbucks being quick and people wanting pods has been my biggest thing. But my partner keeps telling me to get on TikTok and go live and shit. Let me tell you about that. I have an all right following on TikTok. I think it's like 88,000. Yeah. You live right now, bro. But I can't fuck with TikTok. What? You live right now, yeah. bro. Right. So, but I try you know to go live. You know, right how right you know how people go you live on there? live right yeah, now, right. He's talking about TikTok, though. Yeah, so you know how people go live on there, right? Yeah, of course. I'm not a character. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, gotta be a and I'm down yeah, to be successful from my experience. Yeah. Like I don't have that many watchers on there or whatever because I just try to do a little workout, talk about a little, ask me questions. But the people who are successful on the lives on TikTok are fucking characters yeah, or, or half naked chicks. I you know, see that. If you're not people a fucking goofball right dancing now, around, bro. I don't know how to be a character. So I'm just or, like, hey, or fuck. being an NPC, try, pretend to be a robot, like that, it, that one chick. Yeah. I get it. I get what we you're saying, bro. We got people watching yeah. you now, yeah. though, bro. I, I, yeah. I, I get what oh, you're yeah, saying, Oh, yeah, this is bro. real good. Yeah, oh, yeah I love that. But I'm saying, like, on TikTok, you, bro. Yeah, he TikTok tells me to go live, sense. and I set it up, and I try to fucking be, I try to watch what huh. other people do and get on there, but I just, I'm not a character, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just do no, you, bro. It. Be you, dog. Yeah, be you. That's the problem. Be you, dog. No, no, with TikTok, I mean, it. it, it's I, slow, I, I you know what I mean? Because TikTok is a different a different thing. It's Instagram, a different animal. Yeah, Instagram is more people, I, I'm, I'm more successful on Instagram with people hey, associating with me. People are watching you now, bro, mm -hmm. and, and, you know what I mean? With just us being on this and uh, being on this coffee, dog, 
Oh, yeah. It's going to be a whole different movement, dog. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Real well, shit. Yeah, I appreciate you. you, you I wanted to you, ask you, you about your homie that does the... Is that a coffee brand? Oh, no, it's uh, Project Coffee Cup. They're, uh, they take care of the streets. They are... Uh, Casey, take it away, sir. Yeah, I was trying to check out what that was. Project Coffee Cup is a nonprofit organization that helps uh, individuals in need. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it started off with like they feed he the homeless. Yeah, they shit. feed the homeless. Jacob, shout out to Jacob. That's the homie right there. Jacob, yeah. you, know, you, you know what I think is important it, with his, coffee? His goal is to have a cafe one day. Is that his goal, bro? Yeah, you know, to have a coffee yeah, cafe. Yeah. And but then what about when the homeless start loitering in front of his business? Or trying to ask to use the bathroom every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's going a whole and, different and, game. And harassing the the staff, just like Starbucks had to stop making the restrooms <laughs> public. Yeah, because it was making the staff yeah. like the staff were. Uh, Tell him if he wants to when he opens his cafe, I'll supply him his beans. Dang, yeah. that, that would be sick. That, There's a connection no right bullshit. there. You know what I mean? Yeah. He yeah. might need that. Well, you know what I think. Talk. I think uh, with coffee, making coffee. So we go to Starbucks and and then we buy uh, Starbucks in the store. And when you make it at home. Like you end up going back to Starbucks to order yourself some Starbucks, right? Anyway, because it, yeah. it doesn't it taste the same, bro. Mm. So I think what it is is I think it has to do with something in the heat of the water. Like I don't think our Mister Coffee pots. Because I was really thinking about it because I, I really love coffee, mm. and and I would and and there's a lot of if you go. On, I did this on YouTube, dog. But you so you can boil the coffee these coffee grounds or whatever, right? And I think if you get it to a certain temperature, is when you will pull all of the maybe the caffeine out the yeah, beans or something. Rolling, yeah. yeah, so that's and why then put the strainer. Yeah, bro. Like that's just bomb that way. French press. Well, they so drink those little cold. like in Armenia or certain places, bro. They drink these little cups, bro. That got maybe like some coffee espresso in yeah, it. Yeah, And so if you're gonna make that, and I see it on movies all the time, yeah. and I see it on just different places, and I'm like, man. Obviously, that coffee cup is that small for a reason. For a reason. For yeah. a reason. Because if you had to happen to have an IHOP coffee cup and you drank all that bitch, you know what I mean? You might end up in the hospital. A big gold, dude. <laughs> you turn into jackhammer hands or something, you know? <laughs> but so, ah, oh, man. That would be fun, bro. Travel the world and try out different coffee shops of the world. Wouldn't that be fun, though? That would be People tight. would be interested in that yeah, shit, you huh? With your platform Good that you shit. have already? You could probably get down with that pretty good. Yeah, yeah, for sure, bro. Because I, I, you already seeing, have the, the presence, so you start making a little show of, of doing that around the world. That'd be so much fun. People would fucking. That'd be amazing, bro. Especially just go and be who you guys are. Having these guys right here, these yeah. fucking animals. Yeah. Having Rick in the background, Whoa. fucked up off a of Smirnoff. <laughs> <laughs> You're live right now, dog. <laughs> You guys could go to You're Paris. You're live right now, dog. <laughs> <laughs> My boy Rick, dog. You guys could go to Paris. <laughs> homie could make you guys outfits. Oh, in, man. Wee uh, wee. Oui, oui. And we'd be like in the, like Morocco or stuff in the <laughs> desert with all the whole the whole get down and Whoa. have the little coffee cups with some camels Imagine right there. That, that would I, be sick. I want to go to Dubai, bro. I want to go to Dubai. I've been oh, seeing, yeah. like, they'd be, man. They, they have those boxing matches out there. Dubai, and, Abu Dhabi, yes. Yeah. Bro. Man, they, and them dudes, what are like the rich ass princes out there? Like, so it's like, so they're like the emir, like the Emirates, right? They like, uh, they they're all like there was like their own, like that was their kingdom, and they're all separated. But one one of them brought them all together and decided that they should like, basically create, like the the country, right? And then like, yeah, Abu Dhabi and all that, uh, Dubai and all that. It's like their own Whoa. like their own like uh, families like run those different like that. Those like those those countries, but they're like one big tribe. But so is there is there a, is there a food chain out there, bro? Or so they have like uh, oil and natural gas. That's where their money comes from. So like are Dubai they are they all rich? Bro? Yeah, no, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, they got fucking. Money only like out there. The, yeah, the country is only like fifty years old. But Dubai actually ran out of gas, so they don't really have gas. But Abu Dhabi still has like oil and gas. That's some random ass knowledge. Country, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him, bro. He's you, good you, shit. You expect that Casey's from that little guy. Ka you know, Casey. You ain't even know it. Man, Casey's <laughs> shit, dog. It's the boy right there, dog. You know what I mean? Casey's the boy, dog. You know, got if, if, all if the Joe Rogan got got his uh, uh, Jamie and we fucking, got our Casey. We got dog. our Casey right here. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Sick. You know? Yeah, hundred percent, bro. You know what I mean, yeah. fucking, fucking the three amigos. Uh, plus canine sometimes you know what I mean uh, oh. there you go the three amigos take on the fucking world one coffee cup at a yeah. time <laughs> yeah. 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 
Shout out to the Three Amigos. Remember that movie? Yeah. Was that a good movie? Remember when them fools would, you know, what the fuck were they doing? They would uh, put one hand on the hip and then fucking. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. They fucking, they'd, they'd all have their thing and God, that. They did. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> fuck you, Lucky. That shit's fucking hilarious. You already know. Hey, bro, well, this has been amazing right here. I appreciate your time. I got a package for you right here, too, dog. Matter of fact. This is for you, my G. I appreciate and you. As a matter of fact, this is for you too right here, dog. Yes, sir. appreciate that. So, yeah, man. some Hoodstocks gear. Yeah, hey, oh, www.50racks.com. Yeah. Place your order today. Um, and matter of fact, don't even place it right now, dog. We Give me a couple hours and I'm going to fucking drop the prices and shit, dog. Just because holidays are coming up. And I'm, I'm going to drop the prices to a place where you're just going to, you know, I mean, you're going to buy your loved ones some, uh, and get it. some Christmas uh, presents. And I'll make it affordable for you guys. Not that it's not affordable right now, but I'm going to drop the prices within the next couple hours. Place your order. www.50racks.com. And I know sometimes, being the fact that I take the orders, I package the orders myself. Sometimes I'm a little, uh, I could be a little slow in the draw on getting the orders out, but I will have them all out this week. Uh, every, yeah, everybody give it up for Wild Life Fit. Wild Fit Whoa. Life. Wild Fit Life. Why Why is it Wild Fit Life? Wild Life Fit. Wild, okay, you, did, you, did it take a minute to figure out how you wanted to word that? A little bit, I guess so, yeah. You know what I mean? But it is Wild Fit Life. Wild Fit yeah, Life. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of fit life shit. Yeah, I threw wild in front of it to be different. Right? There's a lot. Because you're a firefighter. That's I it. mean, wild no, 100%. Right there, that makes yeah, sense. But there's a lot of fit life shit out there. I even had somebody try to bite my wild fit shit on uh, Google. Damn, what the do, fuck? Do, do, you, uh, do you own it? Not like that, so they're, they're good. About to own it, though. Well, you, well, you can. You can apply for You can apply for a trademark now that you have a product and you're selling the product. Mm. You could apply for it. Yeah. Okay. It's not crazy expensive. I mean, do that, bro. Like, don't, don't, don't. Just don't sleep submit the application. It. It's not really that hard. It's not difficult. Okay. And you can and you can do that through uh, USPTO trademark. You can do that through. Uh, fuck! I'll tell you right now. You what can you do it do. through individuals too. What I is that fucking uh, uh, something? The, the the shit that I did it through. Oh, uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, um, legal uh, zoom. Yeah, legal, legal zoom. zoom. I do that. Yeah, I went through them for all like my. Uh, LLC shit, all like my LLC decision. shit and stuff like that. Okay, and so that that's where you uploaded this product though too, right? Are yeah. you having up? Yeah. Well, there's separate ones, so that's what I'm saying. I need to go and upgrade some shit. Yeah, as long gotcha. as you're selling product and have physical product, yeah. then you could apply for a trademark of the name on that product specifically. And it's always good. To, and it's always good to go through go through uh, GoDaddy or whatever it is. I have that too. And own the .dot com. I do that too. Yeah. You own the .dot com. Yeah. Okay, so that I'll helps out. Life that helps. That helps com. out in a court of law, and it's kind of like you can do different things, like the old school way. Like back in the day, if you didn't have your uh, music copyrighted, what they would tell you to do is they would say, "Mail your CD to yourself through certified mail. Don't open up the package." And and that could be just as legit right there too wow. in a court of law, bro. Yeah, so, yeah, that was I've heard that too. Yeah, crazy on little mm-hmm. little tricks. There, there's yeah. well, there's tricks to the trade that we know that's far beyond our knowledge because you know we don't have anybody guiding us through this, bro. Right. I mean, I don't. I I well, actually I do, and his name is YouTube. You yeah, know? I don't either. I, forget. <laughs> I don't either. Yeah. I just started winging shit and researching it and trying to. That's the way to come out with this or that. Dude, you know? that's the way you to could, do it, you honestly. can do a lot with just that though, yeah. like YouTube and just winging it and just setting the intention and moving just forward, right? It, bro, it's, it's gonna good. Get it, you it's right good now. because yeah, like it will, and you can yeah. take it small steps and because everything costs so much fucking money. But if you can just take the small steps and do it, you'll be alright. You can still do shit. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, I wish you nothing but success, brother. Likewise, man. Thank you. You're always you're always welcome, bro. Anyway, we can shout out to the homie dog doing any, big things. Anywhere we can uh, network, uh, let these guys know one more time how they can support you, brother. Wildfitlife805.com and go check us out on Instagram, Wildfitlife805. We got all the links right there. You know, shoot me a message if you're interested in some info. I'll help you out. And again, let me know you saw me on Hoodstocks or discount. And if any of you uh, single moms are out there watching and you're in a tough spot, hit me up for a program. And I'll help you out.
Look at that. Again. That's Hell the yeah, homie dog. showing love, dog. Yeah. So all you hater and ass fools, you already know. You about to turn some homie fucking showing love. You about to turn some threes into some eights, huh? You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, bro. Some threes. Trying to help Rick out, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Rick, get on the program, Rick. Yeah. Let's see you get buffed, that, dog. dog. That fool's already thin, buff. though. Look at that fool. That fool thin, bro. Look at that. No, we gotta get you buffed, though. Hey. Hey. That's the future stepdad right there, you know what I mean? Stepdads rule the world, though, These baby. fools know. Hey, look, dog. You know what's funny about all this shit? These fools be clowning on all this extra shit, but I'll be outside every day and ain't nobody approach me. You know why? Because I'll smack the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Love it, Rick. Hey, we love Rick you guys. Shit. We are out of here. Ooh. We will see you. Uh, look out for them Willy Wonka golden tickets coming up, baby. Follow me on Instagram, at Lucky Sun Zoo. If you're a single mother and